Hey folks, welcome back. This is Mahin over here with, I think this is going to be the third session that we have. Uh, and I guess most of you have already attended the, any of the previous sessions. Can you guys quickly confirm if you are able to hear me through the chat? Uh, please use the chat. Just let me know if you can hear me out. Yeah. All right. So I will start in a while. Uh, let's just quickly wrap up with the intro and then probably we can, uh, you know, discuss a few more things. Oh, my voice is low. Okay. Let me quickly check. I think now it should be fine. Is it better Priyanshu? Okay. So basically what we are going to start with is uh, a data analysis project that we have planned. But just before that, I want to quickly understand, have you guys attended any of the previous, uh, you know, project session that we had? So one, I think we had on supply chain and then we had on banking. So have you guys attended any of them? Can you let me know through the chat? If you have attended, just type in a one. If you have not, just type in a zero. Don't get surprised if you don't recognize me. The only thing is like, uh, I don't have the beard anymore, but uh, it's it's me only. Yeah. All right. So, oh, seems like a couple of folks are new to this sessions. Okay. So let me, uh, <laughs> thank you. Okay. So let me quickly introduce myself once again for people who are meeting me for the first time. So my name is Mahin Jaswal uh, and uh, all of my students refer to me as MJ. So I would expect the same from you. And uh, in case if you're planning to reach out to LinkedIn, please do mention that you're from, uh, you know, Tutor Academy and I'll definitely uh, you know, uh, connect with you. Okay. So my name is Mahin Jaswal and, uh, presently I am working at Google as a data science analyst. I have around three and a half years of experience in data science and, uh, majorly at Google, I work on YouTube to, uh, protect YouTube from bad actors. So basically people who are trying to take advantage of the YouTube platform for their own selfishness, where they might be creating, you know, fake profiles, creating some kind of automation uh, bots and all those malicious activities. Okay. So I majorly specialize in machine learning, statistics, product analytics, SQL and Python. Okay. But apart from all this, I have like a uh, good understanding, I would say that of majorly the broad areas that you deal in data science. And previously I worked with Mio Sigma for around three years where I have consulted a couple of fortune 100 clients. And I have experience in like entertainment, retail, uh, marketing, supply chain, all those uh, fields where I have worked on some specialized projects. And also I have worked at some research universities where I worked with NUS Singapore, uh, you know, and uh, Nokia. Yeah. So that's pretty much about me. In my leisure time, I like to like just hang out, uh, you know, roam around new places. And uh, right now I have got interest in tennis. So that's what I'm trying right now. Okay. So my LinkedIn profile, let me quickly share this. So this is my LinkedIn profile. I'm sharing the link in the chat. Feel free to uh, ping me. Okay. Cool. So, yeah. So I just want to, you know, for people who already know me, I think you already have a hang of what kind of sessions we have, right? And for people who are attending this for the first time, you will definitely enjoy our problem solving journey. So for, this is a question for people who have been here before. Have you guys enjoyed the last two sessions? Did you enjoy the way that we are solving the problem and not directly writing the code? Are you guys liking it? Can you write an, write a big yes in the chat if you are enjoying that? Yeah. Okay. Nice. Nice to see Shruti, Robin, Ankit, Hema, Madhu, Bala Shinberg, Himanku, Adamya, Aparna, Shivaraj. Okay. I think I am getting a hang of your names right now. I mean, I don't know you by faces, but definitely I can relate with your names when I look at the chat. Okay. Uh, all right. Thank you so much. And, uh, Today, so let's talk about what we have planned today. So majorly what we have planned for today is SQL based machine learning project. Okay. This is something you would not really, uh, you know, hear that so frequently in 
the real world because generally when we deal with machine learning we talk about python or r okay and more commonly i think python nowadays right but this particular project i wanted to specially focus on sql so that's why i have designed in uh, you know in such a way that you would be having a very good grip over sql and uh, we'll be using little bit python as well but majorly sql and by the end of two days like today and tomorrow you would definitely have revised a lot of concepts in sql at the same time you would have also know something about google cloud platform and bigquery which we are going to use today and you would also learn about machine learning okay these are very nice skills to have in your resume a lot of companies right now are looking for you know gcp and bigquery uh sql skills so i think definitely it will be an add on to your resume if you uh learn thoroughly about this okay so we'll see uh, have you heard of like you know how to create machine learning models using sql have you guys heard of it type in a one or zero no okay hmm see so it seems to be something very new okay and uh, hopefully you guys will enjoy it so we'll see like how we can create all this ml models and uh, we'll definitely have a, a good time with that again okay? okay hema raju i think is the only person who is already familiar with it okay that's nice okay so let's get started are you guys excited can i get a big yes if you guys are excited for this session yeah okay i see only shruti being the most excited others where are you, where are you guys lacking okay okay now now i am seeing the responses okay great to see this uh, let's get started okay i don't know what you guys but i am definitely honestly i'm very excited for this session because i have uh, invested a lot of efforts in the last couple of days to implement this and i'm sure this would help you out okay so let's get started let me quickly start with the problem statement that we have uh, hmm. okay let me quickly share my screen in a while okay so for people who are already familiar you already know that we kind of use problem solving method to solve any particular project so that's what we are going to follow today as well okay so for people who are new completely attending for the first time you don't have to worry because i'll be explaining everything from scratch so even if you are new you would definitely get a very good hang of the things okay uh, one more thing on a scale of 1 to 5 how comfortable are you with sql right now 5 being the highest can you guys rate yourself on sql on a scale of 1 to 5 3 3 2 3 2.5 hmm all right so let's see let's see uh, i see most of you are on 3 uh, let's see how we can you know reach to a stage where we are above 4 okay so that's what will be our aim uh, to be there in this two days sessions okay so let me quickly share the screen you can see the google document in just a second okay are you guys able to see the screen can you quickly can anyone write a one just a one okay thanks thanks shruti let's start uh, hmm. okay so let me introduce the problem statement to you guys uh, so first project we saw was about supply chain right it was about supply chain and we were building a ml model for risk prediction correct we discussed about the main topic over here was the hrs score right that was the main topic okay second project was about retail okay uh, retail marketing where we talked about customer targeting okay and the main problem was about using propensity versus uplift modeling which was a causal inference advanced topic right that was the last topic that we had seen okay causal inference okay so nice we have seen some kind of innovation topics these are some very rare topics not really talked about in the industry and this are some very good projects that you can have on your resume as well okay so let's see the third one which we are going to cover today so this particular project is going to be about a cap service provider okay so basically 
you can can you guys name any famous cab service provider company can you guys name any particular cab service provider company hmm. uber ola rapido nice anything else anything else apart from ola uber rapido lift oh nice you guys are aware of lift that's that's really nice and drive okay hmm blue smart bold okay couple of things i myself i'm not aware but good to see that you guys have knowledge about them grab yes grab is uh, also a very good company nice okay so imagine imagine you are working for one of the leading cab service provider companies okay until now we were working as a consultant for the client right now we'll be working in that same company okay so you are not working as a consultant for a client you are yourself working in that company okay so let's say there's a cab service provider company okay so let's assume it's uber okay so for now let's just say it's uber okay so what you can assume you are a data analyst okay you are working as a data analyst at uber okay so assume you are working there and this is the problem statement that you are given okay now you are working in a specific team okay so this particular team is called the riders ops team team so this team is basically deals with rider operations okay this is a specific team in uber you might imagine uber uber might have multiple teams okay and one of the team is basically who's handling the rider operations okay so what is going to be the rider operations is basically a team which deals with you have the drivers right so uber if you talk about the uh, place let's just say only uber cab service okay i'm not talking about uber eats so uber cab service has majorly which components first component is your uh, riders okay these are your customers correct then again you have drivers for uber this also is their customer right because the more drivers that they have the more revenue they can earn right similarly the more riders that they have the more revenue obviously they can earn okay so for uber both of them are their customers okay obviously the drivers count is going to be less compared to the riders uh, count okay so this is called as a two way market place okay this is called as a two way market place in case if you are talking about uber eats which is a food delivery app something called as uber eats right and not the cab side of business okay you would have a separate team for that right and for uber eats basically you would have multiple components one would be the riders right so this now riders will become what this will become your let's say you have one delivery okay delivery uh delivery uh, folks okay i mean you just have delivery guys who are delivering the order okay next what do you have you have the restaurants okay who you would have to partner to pick up the order and deliver it and finally you have the customers okay so here you see this is called a three way marketplace okay this is called a three way marketplace okay so assume right now we are dealing with a two way marketplace situation where you have riders and you have drivers yes correct correct so much yeah uh hmm. so now for our problem statement let's just say this rider operations team okay this team is specifically dealing with riders and drivers okay their major focus is that the riders who are there they should have a very good experience with the uh with the uh drivers who are present okay so one specific problem take okay, a one specific problem for this particular quarter take okay? so let's say this quarter is uh, let's say q3 okay this is the quarter 3 and for this our main aim or main goal or we also call it as main okr take okay? so okr stands for objective key result so something like a goal take okay? let's say you have a goal right now take okay? and uber is a product company right so generally all this product based companies they follow this system of okrs so for every okr a team uh, will have some plan for that particular quarter so let's just say if i am working at google i'll have a particular uh, you know okr for the particular quarter so that's just like a particular goal so let's say this rider ops team for q3 has a particular plan okay 
right now the particular problem statement that they want to focus uh, is OKR is objective key result. Okay, so this is just a framework which product companies generally use to define their code. So objective says define what is your objective and key result says what is going to be your uh, main result that you want to try to achieve. For example, my objective could be I want to, uh, you know, let's just say I want to um, reduce the waiting time for my riders. Okay? This would be your objective. You need to reduce the waiting time for your riders. Okay. And then you talk about the key result. Okay. So let's say your key result is, um, let's just say you say that uh, your customer average customer ratings increase by X percentage. Okay. You would mention something like, so this is your key result that you are trying to achieve. So this is how you define an OKR. So generally companies define an OKR for a particular quarter. So let's say for our writer ops team, the main aim for this particular quarter is going to be, you have to first, so there are multiple things that you want to check. Okay. So basically you have been tasked, you are a data analyst and you have been given, your team has been given the task where you need to solve for multiple problems. Okay. What are those problems? Look into, uh, Okay, so first thing is you need to look into the right completion times and see if there are a lot of deviations. Okay, so the, what does this mean? Basically, the right completion time is defined as as soon as someone just orders a cap, take it from the time a person orders a cap to the time that person is delivered to the uh, or drop to their home. Delivered is not the right term, but drop. Okay, so drop to their home. Take it so. This particular time, the total time from the person started booking a cab to the time they were, you know, uh, dropped to their place and the uh, driver ended the trip. This total time is called as the right completion time. Okay? So I just want to first have a small analysis and we need to check if the right completion time, if there are a lot of deviations. What does deviations mean? Basically, some completion times, I mean, majority of the completion times uh, if let's just say they fall within a specific range, let's say completion times are, let's just say generally like, uh, majorly are between, let's say 10 minutes, okay. 10 minutes to 35 minutes. Okay. But in case, if you see some completion time, take okay, completion time is greater than two hours. Okay. And let's just say such kind of completion time. Okay. Such kind of completion time. So let's say one is equal to two hour taken. Okay? And one is equal to, let's say, three R, okay. And one is equals to, let's say, uh, four R, okay. So let's say this is around twenty percent time. This is around twenty percent of time, okay. And let's say this is twenty percent age of time as well, okay. And this particular scenario between ten to thirty-five, it's let's say, uh, you know. 60 and uh, probably let's say 10 percent okay and uh, anything anything uh you know below 10 or uh, hmm. okay let's make this as actually one hour okay so let's keep this as one hour okay similarly you would have something for hmm. okay uh so rest so 70, 30%. So let's just say this kind of information you have been given where you know the completion time is 10 minutes to one hour for 10% of the rights. It's around two hours for 20% of the rights, three hours for 20% of the rights, four hours for 20% of the rights and rest anything where whatever is left is going to be 30%. So anything like beyond four hours or anything below 10 minutes, is all cumulatively 30 minutes, uh, 30 percent of the time. Okay, so now you see there's a lot of deviation. Why? Because 10 percent, it's like 10 minutes and one hour. 
suddenly 20% is going to be four hours, then three hours. So it's not like, you know, now if you were to compare with another case where the completion time is only, is only between, uh, or let's say is between, uh, let's say 20 minutes to 40 minutes. Okay. And this is like 90% of the time. Okay. This is like 90% of the rights. Okay. And rest 10 might be uh, distributed, but 90% is coming from here only. So you see, there's not a lot of deviation. Okay. There's not a lot of deviation. So one problem right now, let's say your manager tells you, check the completion times and see if you find a lot of deviations. Okay. So which statistical measure can we use to check into deviations? Can you guys name a statistical measure? which we can use. Correct. So I think Akshay has uh, given the first correct answer, then followed by Rajat, right? So one thing we can quickly check is something called as standard deviation. Okay. So we can quickly check what is the standard deviation. Okay. And uh, this standard deviation will tell us how much uh, kind of uh, deviation or variation we have in the data. Okay. Obviously the square, we can check for variance as well, but let's say we are just sticking with standard deviation for now. Okay. So first thing is that thing. Second thing is, um, let's say Uber already has a prediction system called as internal, or let's capitalize this called as internal, um, Okay, so Uber right now has a prediction system called as, let's say, let's say internal trip duration prediction system. Okay, so short formed as ITDPS. Okay, short formed as ITDPS. Okay, so let's say this system basically tells the user or, uh, you know, any particular person what is going to be the trip duration. Okay, so let's say if you are a customer, okay, if you are a customer, let's say you are a rider, right? That means you are a rider. So now you open the Uber app, okay? What if there was a new feature? What if there was a new feature, which basically predicted, okay, which basically predicted the trip completion time, okay? okay. So right now, when you open Uber, you might see like how much time it will take for you to for the driver to be allocated for you that is shown right it it also show you shows you like how much time it might take for you to reach to a particular place right and let's just say combining everything we had a feature when as soon as you open the app and you you know like mention two places and as soon as you try to book a kind of uber service let's say uber go or uber auto or you know a particular uber uh, service it will tell you what is going to be the total completion time. Okay. So this time was, will not only include your uh, travel time from one place to the other, but also the time it's going to take for it to book the cab service. Okay. So this, let's say, is going to be added. Okay. Let's say this is a new feature which has to be added. Okay. So what they want to do is this particular team. Okay. This particular team already has a system, which basically predicts the trip completion time. Okay. But now you want to, now you want to come up with a ML based system for predicting this. Okay. So let's say this system, somehow they were predicting, but it was not through ML. So probably they have a rule based system or statistical system through which they were predicting, okay? And let's just say right now you have no information how this is get, getting predicted, okay? But you need to come up with an ML-based model which should be predicting this. And obviously this ML model should be better than rule-based system to be deployed, okay? So idea is the ML model should perform a lot better than the rule-based system 
then only we will basically deploy it and users will get uh, to see the predictions out of it. Okay. Else it doesn't make sense to be deployed. Okay. Another question to ask is, is this model performing good enough to be launched? Okay. Okay. Finally, before investing in ML models, the product managers want to quickly validate if this idea is worth investing. Okay. That's it. This is your end to end problem statement. Okay. So let's quickly summarize what we have to do. Okay. Let me write it over here. Okay. So we have a couple of points. First is we have to check for deviations in the completion times. Second, we have a system called IT DPS. Now you want to come up with an ML based model, which should perform better than the original rule based system for predicting the trip completion time. But even before we start building the ML model, we have to first think about is this feature. Okay. Is this feature that is going to be launched? Is that idea worth investing? I mean, if a user is going to see, if user is going to see this new feature, where they can see now the total completion time ticket total completion time do you think we should add this feature okay do you think we should add or we should not add if you think we should add then we'll basically go ahead and build the ml model and invest our time and resources in that ticket finally we'll confirm let's say we it's worth investing you should go ahead and basically you know build that model we'll finally check if that model is performing good enough for it to be launched. That means, is it giving us very good uh, predictions such that it has to be launched? Like finally we can deploy it to the user. Obviously, if you give a bad model in the app and you deploy it, it's of no use, right? Because users experience will be badly hampered. They might think that, you know, it was going to show me like uh, 30 minutes and now the total completion time took like two hours, right? It's obviously of no use. Okay. So you definitely want a very good model and that's why you are going to build this model. Okay. All right. So let's move forward. So let's say you are the data analyst and now you have to first start with the validation. Okay. You'll start with first validation of this idea. If it's worth pursuing or not. Okay validation of the idea okay so for validation of the idea i want to know from you guys okay what do you think we should check to understand to understand if this feature uh if this feature of predicting of uh, or let's say showing the uh, predicted completion time would be useful. Okay. So what do you think? What should we check? Can you guys think? So imagine if you are working as a data analyst and you have to figure out the feature that you are going to launch is it worth pursuing or not? Okay. So what do you think? How can we validate if actually this would help you or not without building that model? Okay. Without building the system, let's say you want to validate it. Okay. Is it worth pursuing or not? And this actually is an interview question. Okay. This is an interview question. Uh, I've just changed the problem statement, but uh, this is kind of similar to what you can expect in interviews with product based companies like uh, Swiggy, Uber, uh, Lyft, 
ठीक है सो ऑल दिस आर प्रोडक्ट बेस्ड कंपनीज विच जनरली काइंड ऑफ हैव सिमिलर क्वेश्चंस ओके आई कैन शो यू ऑन ग्लास टू दिस काइंड ऑफ क्वेश्चंस हैव ऑलरेडी बीन आस्क्ड इन प्रीवियस इंटरव्यूज एंड दिस हैपेंस फॉर लाइक अ 1 आवर केस स्टडी राउंड ओके यू विल बी आस्क्ड इन अ 1 आवर केस स्टडी प्रॉब्लम सॉल्विंग राउंड एंड यू विल बी आस्क्ड टू सॉल्व दिस प्रॉब्लम ओके एंड इट माइट हैव एमएल राउंड एज़ वेल ऑन टॉप ऑफ इट ठीक सो लेट्स क्विकली सी uh what you guys think about this okay let's start um hmm, hmm, hmm. so if he says cost benefit analysis okay nice that's a very good idea so what you can do is you can see a cost benefit analysis so what does that mean you basically check in simple terms okay what are you going to check what is the cost or basically the investment okay cost of building the feature okay cost of building the feature and similarly you will trade off it with what is going to be the benefit take a benefit of implementing the feature and then you can simply check if the benefit is much higher than the cost yes it makes sense to build it take okay? but that is how you are going to analyze right you can see in the cost and you can see the benefit okay that is one way you can actually uh, check about it anything else anything else any other idea yeah cb of the proper species that's correct anything else do you think any other way that we can have a gauge we can analyze why the trips are taking more time that is at which point it is taking more time uh, means if driver is taking more time to reach the first place yes that's a good analysis to do so basically look into the uh, trip durations figure out where it's taking a lot of time and then quickly check if what is going wrong in those places where it's taking a lot of time hmm. so that is something which would help us to do analysis but still i want a answer which tells me if this idea is worth pursuing or not okay so can you analyze something okay can you analyze something which tells us this idea is worth the investment or not okay okay what do you think what can we do what can we do to identify if we should proceed with the idea or not npv okay what does np npv stand for net present value okay i am not aware of what is net present value let me quickly google this okay it's the difference between the present value of cash inflows and the present value of cash outflows over a period of time okay seems like it's basically a uh you know like a difference or a ratio between what outcome or what revenue you might achieve in the future compared to what you are achieving right now so i think probably it's that uh, if you correct me if i'm wrong but uh, i guess from what i have read uh, this is kind of just talking about how much profit you can generate in the upcoming uh, period due to this uh, investment okay let's see other things if you are able to reduce duration time okay uh, how would you gauge that if you are able to reduce it or not easy or complex to implement yeah that is somewhat related to the cost of building the project user experience about this feature demo analyze this feature among some users at first limited people like demo yes this is a very good point okay so this is by uh, jp sama right so this is a very very good uh, point so one thing you can quickly do is check the hmm hmm yeah robin yes that's also a very good point so check the uh, user experience okay for some set of users first okay but again even before we check for those users i want to know even we should check for those users or not is it worth pursuing or not for those users as well okay like an early access yes okay even before i give the early access i want to take a call if should i give an early access to some people okay historical reviews yes this could be a very good parameter okay this is actually one of the correct answers so historical reviews let's write it down okay so what do you see uh, so this is by balan shebgur okay so what you are saying is you have historical reviews customer ratings right okay if if you feel customer rating is very average customer rating let's call it mean customer rating if you feel mean customer rating is very 
बैड ठीक है एंड द रीजन हैज बीन मैंशन एज यू नो एज लेट जस्ट ए लॉन्ग वेटिंग टाइम और लेट्स ए took more than what was promised or let's say let's just say no, no reason is mentioned but the rating is also bad okay then you know there's some problem there's some problem with your system and probably one of the reason is the delivery time or the riders time right probably the time is not that accurate it's taking more time in case if you can tell the customer to wait for like you know that much time in advance customer would be prepared and they can actually better handle this right i mean it's just like you tell the customer instead of saying like 30 minutes you just tell them it's going to take 45 minutes that's the overall waiting period and you ensure within 45 minutes the tr trip is completed what will happen the user experience will improve but if the customer ratings are low that means customer ratings if are they are bad that means we should we can try this particular feature okay but if the customer ratings are good okay let's just say customer rating is good okay probably probably this might not add that much value okay not add that much value okay so this is just a very uber level proxy i mean just a very uh, low level proxy that we can have okay but we can have better proxies okay we can have better proxies to gauge this ठीक है, so one thing is correct, you can check the historical review, you can check the previous customer rating and then take a call. ठीक, let's see if you guys have something else. Driver availability for incoming ride request and acceptance. Okay, so what is Hema uh, suggesting is we basically check the hmm, driver availability. ठीक, so let's say okay, so let's say if there are more number of drivers available, what will happen? you would uh, be able to like uh, you know give fast uh, rights to the users okay and you would have a good customer experience but driver availability right now is not related to you know deciding whether we should launch this feature or not the feature in specific is basically if we should show the predicted right completion time okay so let's what will happen is driver let's wait for a minute hello Yeah, uh, I mean this is not only about uh, driver availability. Like, uh, I mean when the um, the rider request, uh, incoming rider request, right? Like you have to allocate the drivers, right? There is no accurate prediction on the completion of the ongoing the uh, rides. Then that would be difficult for the uh, app to predict. I mean, uh, confirm on the incoming. Right? So okay. that would be in a Way being impacted by the uh, longer than usual completion times. So that's Sorry, the what, point I want to make. What was the last line? I mean, uh, if you're not able to uh, accurately predict the completion times for the ongoing rides, right? Then you will be able to commit for the uh, like uh, uh, incoming ride request, right? like the driver available time. Got it. Got it. So. Hmm. i understand probably what you are trying to suggest is basically um uh, hmm. so a lot of your incoming or the next ride depends on the driver availability and obviously like one ride would be dependent on the other so definitely like uh based on the drivers that are available you can actually come up with a, a prediction which might be closer to the actual value right whatever uh, it might not have a lot of duration because you had like plenty of drivers available so i think that is one point probably which... Even uh, the I mean if the current going ongoing ride is completed within say five to six minutes, mm -hmm. even such uh, drivers will be considered for the uh, incoming uh, ride request. Okay, okay, okay. So during an ongoing ride itself, you are mentioning if there's a new ride which is coming up. Hmm. Yeah, that's a normal way. I think Uber and Uber one. Mm -hmm. okay. Correct, correct. Makes sense. Yeah. Hmm. But still, my question is, how do you decide if this idea is worth investing or not? Like if we uh, incent we if we provide incentives to the driver for completing mm -hmm. the trip in the predicted time, so that we can avoid the cancellation which is done usually by driver means that, for example, a driver we we book a cab right and most of the times the driver cancel it may whatever the reason is maybe they are having a better ride or maybe 
if we say that in the you need to complete this uh, drive within a span of 30 minutes right so he will not cancel and we need and the company will provide additional incentives to a driver improving the customer experience so oh, that's that's a very good monetizable idea actually i'll so so if you guys understood what uh, sorry who was talking right now was it dipanshu yes yes dipanshu okay. okay so basically what dipanshu is saying is let's say you are i mean let's say there's a driver right and now what you are telling to the driver as uber so uber will say that you complete the ride within a specified time period okay and this time period you will account in uh you will account in your predicted completion time this will be just a component in it okay so let's say i say uh to my driver one of the driver that you complete the ride within 15 minutes okay 15 minutes and we know comfortably the driver can complete the ride within 5 minutes okay so just to ensure that the driver doesn't like overspeed and everything is paced i am still adding 10 more minutes okay and i'm giving the user uh, the driver saying that complete it within 15 minutes okay and if the driver does this if the driver does this what you can do is you can give some incentive you can give some incentive to the driver okay so basically for every trip which is completed within the time the driver will get some incentive and now what will driver try to do driver will try to complete within that time okay so through that what will happen through that what will happen you would have a stable driver okay uh, driver let's say or let's say stable trip duration okay because now driver will try to keep it stable right it will try to complete within what you have predicted and this 15 minutes you can include in your uh, in your uh, prediction so you can say like 15 minutes what you showed to the driver and you can also mention the booking time right how much time it took for booking time take a uh, booking time plus driver uh, to reach customers location time take so basically first is you book then for the driver to reach the customer's location again it's going to take some time so i'm just adding that time take it plus the final trip duration the driver picks up and re, uh, you know goes to the destination let's say that is 15 minutes right that's called as 15 minutes so this is going to be the total prediction time okay so what uh, dimanshu was saying is probably this 15 minutes can be stabilized okay so that way we can actually have a stable prediction right i mean that way you can ensure your prediction is going to be stable okay yeah minus uh, mm -hmm. it will minus the since we are in sense uh, we are providing incentives to the driver we will minus the cancellation time because most of the mm -hmm. time driver cancel that yeah. so if we provide incentive and say that you complete this within 15 minutes then they will also not cancel uh, the cap which is a which, which is a big problem which that we face correct so uh what will happen is indirectly cancellation rate will basically go down right because now you are going giving some incentive to the driver uh, and you right if i am wrong but all these are the solutions right to like decrease the deviation time but Correct. the question that you have asked is the first stage that we make like what are the things that we should decide that we implement this model or not So like to like uh, to decide to like make uh, them that there is some drawbacks in the current ongoing uh, whatever the nice. process that they, they are using. Correct. So in that yeah. case, like we can compare the our organization timing along with the other service provider. Hmm. Okay. So that's actually very accurate, uh, Akshay. So this is what I was going to come at. so right now see i was just first explaining what exactly is the idea that you guys are giving so yes cancellation rate will indirectly go down that's for sure okay it may or may not go but hypothesis it should go down okay whatever happens let's say it's is the future but hypothesis it should go down okay but again the question remains if the question that i'm asking if we should launch this feature is it worth investing or not this is not something which is directly answering it okay it's just telling you that you can come up with better predictions you can improve the cancellation rate 
but my question is should i just show that feature or not okay so if, if you say like you know if we show this feature and through that the cancellation rate might go down then okay it's it's definitely like one idea to consider okay but i want something more particular or more simple okay so what akshay just now mentioned so uh, akshay can you quickly repeat your idea you basically mentioned about comparing the previous and old uh, system right yeah comparing with the previous process mm -hmm. so yeah so that is one thing which we are talking about here right so one thing is you are checking the historical reviews which is just telling you how much previous ratings have been okay another way so this is exactly the idea that you i want you guys to think about okay how do you decide if you want to launch something one thing is obviously if whatever the existing system is there if it's not doing the job properly then you need to come with something new right but again a top on top of that i have a question that how do you decide if you should do a launch on this or not okay so let me quickly go through other ideas and let's quickly summarize this okay i think someone has answered this okay wait i have missed your chat we should also consider traffic speed of vehicle okay these are like all the factors that are going to affect survey to get improvements yes survey is one correct answer okay so historical reviews as i said okay then next answer is your surveys you take surveys you ask people their opinion would you be interested you ask the driver first take okay? it don't directly like start you know implementing this idea of incentive just before that i want to see right how do i say so i know incentive can give a better outcome or it may not take okay? it that's a hypothesis but to have a better understanding what if what if i want to give a survey to a driver take okay? if i say them you know ask the driver that i am launch i'm planning to launch an idea okay where you would be in incentivized okay where you would be incentivized for completing the ride okay would you be interested for this idea okay do you think this is a good idea similarly ask the customers or the riders okay ask them if if we kind of show you if we show you total prediction time or total completion time in advance okay would this help you or would this uh, be useful okay what do you think rate us okay let us know okay you might not ask all the customers you might not want to like reveal the idea to a lot of customers you might ask only a few group of people ask people who might be very active okay you can ask them and you can go through them if they say that you know yes it's worth you know let's say 90 92 percentage drivers said yes it's worth investing right i mean yes do go ahead with it and let's say around 96 percentage customers felt yes take okay? it so now you know you have a very good chance that you can go ahead with this feature because it seems like there's a demand for it take okay? it so the one thing is comparison of old versus new system okay next is looking into the demand looking into the demand for the feature if there's demand for it obviously launch it if there's no demand what's the point of launching it okay i mean let's just say if you launch this and drivers are not using it or riders are just not looking into the time itself somehow you just know that riders are not looking into the time itself what is the point of launching it if they are not looking into it okay so check if there's a demand for it okay so one thing is you can use historical reviews one thing is you can use surveys okay is can there be any other kind of data analysis can there be any kind of specific data analysis that i should do to understand this scenario let's see if anyone has mentioned any other thing a survey can be taken from the target market is in good as like was the capacity yes that's the same thing what we just mentioned uh, somya yes that's correct how many tickets or customer service requests are made for different issues may be related to the duration or availability of service hmm, hmm. yes this could be a gauge this is a very good point okay so what aparna is saying is basically you check into the customer service request made for different issues and maybe check an issue where they have mentioned specifically that there was an issue with related to availability of service or the trip duration time okay so what you can quickly check is 
you can check number of tickets where uh, let's say uh, you know the problem where issue is regarding the trip completion time okay so what would happen is though the issue might be because of some other reason as well right probably the car which is broke down or something like uh, you know driver was late something would be there but the with your prediction if you show them that you know it would have taken like more time let's just say you accounted for that uh, variability and you said like this is going to take more time and you told them customers will be prepared for it okay they can't complain that the trip completion time was longer okay so this is one way where you can check if the number of tickets are very high in number you know you need to solve this problem but let's just say there is no problem let's just say there is like one or two tickets i mean why would we try to solve the problem if the problem doesn't exist probably we can focus on some other things so this is definitely a good pointer to check take okay. analysis of the completion time with respect to waiting versus riding time uh analysis of the completion time with respect to the waiting versus riding time hmm. yeah you can do this analysis but uh, again this might not specifically answer if we should build this feature this would just tell you like waiting time is taking more time or riding time is taking more time you know uh, then you might have to like drill down and check into other factors which you can solve but indirectly it's not like uh, solving this specific answer okay but yeah this is a useful answer to do NP is a financial profitability on investment. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, if we correct, so I think our thing was correct. Customer waiting time cancel right? Yes, this also you can check. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Nice. So this actually is a very good point by balance shaker work. You one more thing you can check is to watch is check customer waiting time for the cancel right. Okay. What are you checking over here? Okay, you are checking basically if the customer had to wait a long and then they cancelled. Okay, if they had to wait a long, probably probably the waiting time uh, was an issue. Okay, and waiting time was an issue because of probably driver ability, majorly because of driver ability. Okay, but is this something which we should mention for our feature? Do you think this is a problem for our feature? Probably not the best scenario. Okay? Probably not the best scenario, I would say. Okay? This would just tell you an idea that there's an issue with the driver's availability, but it might not specific answer if what will happen if you just show the feature. Okay? Think of, imagine a scenario where what would happen if you show the feature? What could, you know, change or, you know, uh, not change? SWOT analysis is like a framework. Okay, that's fine. But what uh, I'm like, Okay, that is another way, but uh, specifically with data analysis, I want to know more ideas. If people are taking our riders or not, customers is increasing or not, that is fine, right? If people are taking customers increasing, that is very general, right? But specifically, you want to see if this feature should be built, right? So you need to granularize it because of this feature. Okay? This is a general thing. Customer is increasing or not, this can be because of many reasons, right? See if lesser division leads to more number of rights, increasing the revenue. Is this not a number? Is it not part of historical reviews? Yes, this is kind of related to historical reviews. Could be, could be, it could be related. Uh, analysis of daily count with previous time. Hmm, hmm. Nice. So I have seen a lot of ideas. Revenue comparison per quarter. Again, revenue, let's say if it's increasing, decreasing, how do you attribute if it was because of this reason? Okay. With this point, you can attribute it was because of the trip completion time not being correct. Okay, so this is what we are trying to drill down to. Yeah, you can give incentive to a driver. Okay, and that is kind of saying like you know if you implemented the feature, there are higher chances of it getting a success. Okay, but my question is even before you implement the feature. You want to first think whether really drivers would be, you know, willing to get willing, you know, will be happy to have that incentive. Okay. What if driver says that, no, I'm not happy that, you know, even if you give me that incentive and even if you tell me like, uh, if I complete the ride with some incentive right now, 
uh, what if I don't, I'm not, I don't want to take this feature. I mean, I just feel like it's of no use because let's just say the driver might feel like uh, even the incentive that you're ordering might, uh, you know, offering might not be that much high. Or let's just say, even if it's not disclosed, driver just might have a different opinion who might I mean, say that. I mean, the penetration, like uh, there are places where the Ola services or Uber services are not available, but there are more number of customers. Like if they, we say that uh, uh, we are living 50 kilometers from New Delhi, right? Mm -hmm. And there are less number of Ola and Uber cabs available in that area, mm -hmm. right? So if we try to analyze the time, predicted time of booking the cab and getting the cab and reaching to the uh, that place, which is 50 kilometers far. So the companies can analyze this prediction time and provide more services in that area uh, so that they can get more number of orders uh, because there are more number of people which are, which, is, which are booking the cabs. But currently, the situation is that there are... Uh, uh, people are there, orders are there, but they do since they do not have that penetration to that area. Uh, I mean, the data penetration, uh, the data will help us to penetrate to the areas which are remote and which are uh, which are not having uh, Uber or Ola access, but but there are people who want the rights. Okay, so how is our feature coming into the picture over here? So, if I ask you, like, if I show, if I show a feature now, which uh, talks about the total predicted time. I understand your analysis. Basically, we check the prediction times and we look into some specific areas and see the drivers already and see if we can, uh, if it's not there, we can penetrate that particular area. That's a good idea, right? I mean, we can do this. But my specific question is, if I show a feature which talks about the predictive time, right? So how do you think in your idea this would be helpful? So if, for example, I'm booking a cab, sitting it, 50 kilometers far from New Delhi, right? Hmm. And the cab is not in the vicinity of the area where I'm sitting, hmm. right? Now I will, the cab will come 10 kilometers to my place hmm. and then take me 50 kilometers away. And then that will be a 60 kilometer trip duration and the time will increase, right? Uh, so right. we can analyze the predict prediction time for a, from a particular place if there are more number of users and provide more cab services in that area through this feature through analyzing the data of this feature okay. thereby reducing thereby reducing the uh, reducing the trip duration time since we will be in the vicinity of the place and also uh, making profit to the company uh, by getting more orders hmm. so okay now basically you are considering a scenario where you have a prediction in place correct you are saying basically we have some predicted times correct So my question again remains the same. The question is over here, let's just say you have a feature. Okay. I mean, let's just say right now you're considering, let's just say, uh, okay, let's think we don't have a feature. Okay. We don't have a particular feature. Okay. Can you tell me right now you're hypothesizing, right? You are giving my hypothesis that if we have this particular idea, this would be the advantage. Okay. This is exactly what you're saying. Okay. You are saying a hypothesis where if we could, you know, analyze this. And if we had, uh, uh, if we had a feature, which basically, uh, talked about the predicted time, then the, the advantage would be basically the cancellations will go down. You'll have more number of orders, more number of rights. That's a hypothesis, but through the data, through the data, can you, through the existing data, okay, can you first tell if this idea will work. Okay. What do you think? How would you answer that? Uh, Dipancho, are you there? Yeah, yeah. Actually, then we will need another feature, another uh, uh, input variable maybe that uh, distance versus time. Like if I am booking, I am sitting at a remote place and then we will need two, three more input features to accurately predict whether it will help or not. I think this will help, but we will need additional features means that uh, one, we will need whether the distance between the, uh, the remote area and my office is 50 kilometers, but the cab from where it is coming is 10 kilometers. So we have additional 10 kilometers. So we will need that distance uh, uh, 
like we need to um, understand the dis distance between the destination and this uh, from the cab booking area and also compare where the cab is sitting secondly right. secondly secondly we may also need to understand that uh, during the office hours there is a rush in demand like between uh, 8 am to 10 am there is a rush in demand and then between 5 to 7 pm there is a rush in demand from that particular remote area and then we can make cabs more available hmm. uh, during that uh, time frame so we will need some more input variables in the in the data uh, so like, what you are trying to tell us you are telling me factors and features and ideas which will help us to come up with more accurate predictions correct more accurate prediction and we bring in more business and solve customer problem correct so this is actually different from the problem that I am asking. Okay? I'm not asking us to come with more accurate predictions. I'm simply asking if you just show this particular feature. Okay. Imagine it to be like 101% accurate. Okay? Imagine it to be 101% accurate. Imagine a scenario of this, like just that. Over there, how do you think if this idea will work out or not? Let's just say the idea is going to be 101% implementable. Okay? It's going to be 101% accurate. Forget about the factors, forget about the distance and all. I just want to see if I place it somewhere on the user app. Okay. I just want to see somewhere on the user app if people if people are going to use it or not. Okay. And obviously, I can think about the advantages. I mean, obviously, if you are thinking about the feature, the advantages that you have mentioned, the uh, you know, like uh, more orders, more less cancellation rate, that all makes sense. Okay. But I need some data. I need some existing data. For it to validate, take it to just validate the idea and see if this idea will work out or not. Right now, you are creating a hypothesis. Take it, you are just creating a hypothesis and you are saying, like, uh, you know, this can happen considering everything goes fine. Take it, this is fine. Okay. But if, if you look at the survey, right? If you look at the survey or if you look at the customer rating, then you are very sure that something is going wrong. Take it, something is definitely going wrong. But in your case, if you analyze those particular areas, you might have an indication that there's something wrong with the delivery time. There's something wrong with the prediction time. Okay, that is uh, probably an analysis that we can definitely it's look not at. like performing descriptive statistics. Yes, if you even if you yeah, descriptive statistics is for sure. Like, but what kind of descriptive statistics? There we need to be more accurate. Okay, so I think you are thinking on the right terms. I'm not saying that you are wrong. Okay, definitely you are thinking on the right terms. But I am looking for a more specific answer. Okay, so analysis is definitely one thing. Obviously, we have to do right? We have to do our data analysis. But data analysis between what and what? I want that specific answer. Okay, I don't want to know about like factors which will help us to come up with more accurate predictions like distance and all that. Okay. I'm sure like wo, that is a later part, but I want to first understand if feature ka demand hai hai, right? if this feature has a demand, if this particular feature needs to be built or not. Okay? And if this feature is going to give us return on investments worth uh, investing or not. So one thing is as uh, if we had mentioned, right? Cost and benefit analysis, you check how much cost is going to come up and you directly think about the benefit. That is one thing. Okay. Second is you check for the demand. How do you gauge the demand? By checking for customer ratings, sorry, by checking into surveys. Surveys will tell you how much demand is there for this feature. Okay. Third is historical reviews. Basically, you check, you gauge, gauge an intuition if uh, historical reviews needs to be built or not. I mean, historical re reviews is giving you a good idea or not. Second is check number of tickets where issue is regarding the trip completion time. Okay. Yes. Second, customer waiting time. This could be a proxy, but not a very good proxy, I would say, but a little intuition. Then third, Dipanchu, as he's mentioning. So basically you do some analysis, right? Analysis of, let's just say, we do analysis of trip completion time, take it trip completion time. And let's just say, we need to now answer a specific question. Take it trip completion time. We did an analysis, take it, but how do you think this will help us decide any kind of analysis you add to it, which would help us decide whether we should build the feature or not. Okay. And with numbers, okay. It's just not like in air where you are saying, like, if you build the feature, you will increase the, uh, revenue and the order rate is going to decrease. That's a hypothesis, right? I want you to validate it. Tell me your analysis that I can do from the data. Let's just say you have data. Okay. I look into the trip completions time. I have specifically looked into it. Okay. And now 
tell me an analysis which will completely attribute that if the trip completion times were like lower, higher, okay, you could actually do something about it if you build the feature, okay. So let's quickly wrap up. Uh, A-B testing, yeah, that is correct. Feature reliability, okay. Uh, daily write counts, penetration, weather, uh, existing additional feature. Okay, I see. I see a lot of uh, answer. Okay, yeah, A-B, please feel free to uh, pitch in. Yeah, so I wanted to say something about the analysis of the trip completion time. So mm -hmm. if over time, the for the historical data we have, the um completion time we are having, is it reliable? Because you also have to consider some other factors like uh, traffic, like uh, weather and all the stuff. Can this time, is it reliable? Because if customers like me, I you tell me 20 minutes, the trip uh, booking time will take 20 minutes and at the end of the day, take 30 minutes. It will affect the, the public confidence of the brand. So is this reliable over time? Because if it's not reliable over time, even if we invest on the on the feature, customers would not use it because it cannot be trusted because of the accuracy. Sure. So I think the reliability analysis should be done for the trip uh, completion time. Understood. So basically your focus is on checking into the reliability of the idea or the feature. How reliable will this be feature? If it's like high reliable, makes sense to launch it. If it's not, uh, we probably should reiterate and think about a different idea. That's the core of uh, what you're trying to suggest, correct? Yes, yeah. Okay. So yes, I mean, that makes sense. Like obviously if the idea is reliable, then only we should launch it and we should do analysis for that. But uh, again, that analysis, uh, how can you decide if something is reliable? We can only decide once that product or feature is built, right? Because without building it, we won't be able to decide if this is reliable or not. Because it's a technical uh, aspect, right? You'll have to check if it's giving you correct predictions, if those features could be reliable. Okay. So I think that will come later in the future when you have built the feature and then you're checking for its reliability. Right now, we are trying to gauge the demand for that feature. Okay. So, yeah. Uh, does that make sense, Ivy? Ivy? Thinking you have a historical data. You mm -hmm. have given us historical data. So, we can do this from the existing data. Hmm. So, if with historical data, but we don't have the predicted times for the historical data, right? So I, I was thinking the completion time for all the range you gave was from the historical data or was right. it an assumption? No, no. Let's just say we have the original completion times of the historical data. Yes, that is present. Uh, hmm. So we basically analyze the data, but uh, how would we come up with predictions? I mean, we'll have to come up with predictions for that. We'll have to build an ML model, correct? And then you check into the reliability of those predictions, correct? All right. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, uh, we have the completion times, that's for sure. But the thing is, we are talking about if this feature is going to be reliable or not. And for that, we'll have to build the feature. Without building the feature, we won't be able to check if this is reliable or not, just based on historical data. Because historical data doesn't have historical predictions. It has historical original values, okay? Which, I mean, are nowhere related to how accurate your system is going to be, okay? But your idea is definitely a good shot towards the end when we will basically compare the model performance and check while we check, right? This is one of the tasks, as we have mentioned earlier, that is the model performing good enough to be launched, which is exactly your point. Is it reliable or not? Okay. So this will come later. Or this is mentioned I mean, for model, your point is regarding feature. Okay. Cool. Uh, all right, so let's quickly, yeah, okay. So any kind of problem, right? I mean, you guys are definitely thinking on the right track. I'm not saying that you guys are not thinking correctly, but probably some ideas are more specific and can help you out in coming up with uh, a demand gauge, which might help you out, okay? So one thing is you can take survey. One thing is you can check customer ratings, okay? One thing is you can check tickets. Okay. 
and these are for specific reasons okay this are let's say i'm not saying the average customer rating i'm checking the customer ratings where they have specifically mentioned there's an issue with the trip completion time to be not that accurate okay so obviously it could be because of multiple reasons okay and then as dipanshu was mentioning uh, analysis and i think uh, someone mentioned about this as well right customer waiting times for the cancel rate so you can do all this analysis you can check analysis of the uh, trip completion times yes this are going to give you some idea but i won't say like exact idea okay right for me right now this idea is actually a very good idea uh, where you can check uh if your issue is with the trip completion on time or not okay? so we can come up with more ideas okay uh you can think about more ideas related to like waiting times as someone has already mentioned okay uh apart from all this probably you can uh use a proxy okay you can use a proxy Okay, let's say hmm. um let's say customer opened app okay customer opened the app and now let's just say they booked or let's say uh, selected a ride for booking okay i mean if the ride has not been allocated but they have just booked a ride okay so now system searches for cab drivers okay next hmm. what happens is let's just say customer drops right customer drops this is scenario 1 okay that means customer didn't go ahead he cancelled the selection itself okay after a while after a while of this second scenario customer opened the app selected a ride system searches for cab drivers okay uh now cab driver allocated okay cab driver allocated customer um let's say customer just sits in the car or let's say just let's say uh, ride starts once the driver reaches the customer place finally uh and between the ride most probably customer obviously won't you know uh quit the ride right so let's say ride starts and finally ride ends customer gives low rating okay another reason another scenario let's say customer drops okay i have given you three scenarios okay first scenario is customer opens the app selects a ride and the system will start looking for the available cab drivers in the nearby area okay over here now customer is dropping what is the reason customer could be dropping can you guys tell me why do you think the customer would have dropped in the first scenario can you think why would the customer drop duration duration yes okay any other point duration anything else cost cost mm, let's just say cost was shown earlier only right uh, when he was selected duration right? yeah mm -hmm. cost let's just say is not the 
current scenario because it was already shown and then only customer decided to go for a booking okay so most probably okay most probably it's because of the waiting time or the duration okay most probably it's going to be about duration okay so it took more time okay it took a lot of time and how did it take more time why because customer was not aware let's just say customer was told like 5 minutes okay when he was selecting a ride okay when he was selecting a ride that time only he was told it's going to take 5 minutes for the ride to get booked okay but what happened customer agreed for it and that's why he went ahead and he start and the system started searching for it right that's why he selected the ride so he was told like it will take 5 minutes for the ride to be booked and it was let's say told like it would take 100 rupees okay 100 rupees or like let's just say let's say uh, 10 dollars okay and that's why he agreed to go ahead with it but since he's dropping that i mean it, there could be other reasons but most probably okay but most probably what happened is it took greater than greater than 5 minutes okay greater than 5 minutes this could be one thing else if there was no time shown okay if let's just say there was no time shown then probably it just took so much time the customer couldn't wait okay now if i tell you if what if we had a feature which told customer the accurate time to wait okay let's just imagine a scenario okay then probably this particular thing could have been solved okay this could have been solved why because now customer knows how much time to wait and let's just say you are allocating the cab within that time and now also like a uh, customer knows how much uh, time they have to wait right so in case if it's like taking 5 minutes and you are giving 5 minutes only okay i mean it's just like accurate okay second point second scenario i'll i quickly summarize towards the end all these three scenarios why i'm taking all these three scenarios uh second point is basically customer selected a ride system search for the cab drivers the driver was allocated the ride starts ride ends but customer gives low rating okay now can you think what could be a reason why did the customer give a low rating at this point what do you think could be a reason because of the bad quality of the ride or like the uh, driver was not correct bad quality of ride so basically you're not a good experience with the driver this could be one reason any other reason which you feel poor driving yes bad quality of ride let's just say uh, bad quality of ride driver was not a good driver didn't be properly okay uh, yes cleanliness right cleanliness of the cab was not maintained this could be another reason okay rash driving yes bad quality of ride cleanliness of ride those are included another thing could be the trip duration right. yes so trip duration let's just say it took a long time than what it could have taken okay this could be some of the factors okay next the last scenario what could be the factors over here customer opens the app selects the ride system searches for the cab drivers but the cab driver is allocated it's allocated right now okay and then the customer drops okay so basically the driver was coming to the customer location but suddenly the customer drops in okay what could be a reason over here do you see it's different from the first scenario where the customer is dropping before the driver is allocated but here is dropping after the driver is allocated okay what do you think could be a possible scenario i mean what could be a uh, reason for it hmm so driver rating customer would have already known uh, okay 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 so okay nice i mean driver was driver yeah. driver was already involved hmm. in the previous ride that can be the reason okay yes makes sense driver rating so basically as soon as the driver is booked driver rating was low customer didn't like it and he decides to cancel it yes that could be a reason second uh, could be as well drive cab driver was uh, even if he was involved in another ride 
the system would have told the time considering that only let, let's just say he said like 10 minutes the driver will take five minutes and then another five minutes to reach to the customer place five minutes for completing the first ride and that's why the system let's just say said 10 minutes okay so could be like that could not be a reason why he chose to drop if 10 minutes was shown correctly or else if there was no time shown yes then it makes sense that customer would have dropped because he got annoyed just by looking that he's completing another ride okay anything else price changed let's just say price is fixed driver asked to wait let's just say uh, waiting time was already told trip not needed yes obviously that can happen at any time right let's just say customer just decided to change their mind and obviously the trip uh, change of minds okay yes that is also again a reason okay okay driver accepts only cash and not through wallet yes that is again a very a genuine problem so generally what is happening is driver are looking for cash and they might uh, you know ask you to uh, cancel it okay? so now you saw three scenarios and there could be many other scenarios okay but let's just say within those three scenarios okay if you had to pick one scenario to gauge if we should launch that feature or not okay if we should launch that feature or not which scenario would be the best one to analyze one, two, or three. You have to pick only one. That's the condition. Okay. Where would you place your bets? Hmm. Nice. So, what do you think? One, two, or three? Hmm. So, idea is in three, you have many much factors influencing it. Okay. You can't directly say if it was for long waiting time okay it was for long waiting time or inaccurate waiting time it could be a reason definitely but there are multiple reasons you will have to check for okay second again trip duration is one of the factors but there are multiple factors that again can influence what had happened there could be bad quality of ride cleanliness of the cab but with first scenario most probably, okay, I mean, there could be definitely much other reasons, but most probably it was because of the waiting time. Why? Because the system started searching for the cap and then the customer dropped, okay? Other places, if customer was allocated a ride and then dropped, majorly it was because of driver not being proper, okay? Because duration would have already been told, assuming that, okay? And assuming like... Uh, it could have taken more times, but there are other factors which are contributing. So ideally you should analyze everything and, uh, you know, check for other things. But if you have to prioritize only one thing, I would probably start with this ticket because here majorly the reason would have been because of long waiting time ticket. So in interviews, you would be required to talk about the user journey as we did right now. Ticket. You would have to talk about the user journey where you need to tell about how the user would have navigated through the multiple pages okay? and which particular page or which particular user journey you would like to do the data analysis for. Okay? So I would like to perform a data analysis for this scenario. Okay? And through this, if I see that customers are dropping after the system started searching for the cab drivers, that's an indication that we should have a prediction feature for that scenario okay this is just a proxy it's not 100% of accurate obviously but will just give you a proxy okay so i'm just writing not 100% accurate obviously but can give you some fair idea okay others can also give you some fair idea but i think right now among three the best thing you can go ahead with would be this one okay okay so now you can come up with in the interview with multiple ideas as just i did right now okay you can come up with two or three ideas and you can then tell the interviewer which one do you think would be a better analysis to start with. Okay? So I feel right now, this is my uh, uh, idea to start with. Okay? So interviewers really get impressed okay? because now you are not only thinking about one single idea, but you are thinking of multiple ideas and you know which one to select. Okay? And you can think of a reason among three best ideas, which one was actually the most, like more better idea, I would say, you know? 
so this kind of thinking this kind of problem solving is what is required in this rounds of interviews okay so keep practicing practicing all these kinds of product based questions and this would really help you in interviews okay and apart from all this when you combine with this kind of analysis uh, where you are talking about surveys historical reviews you get brownie points for it okay now you know what you need to analyze you will tell the interviewer okay now through that i can gauge an idea okay so we can gauge an idea through cost benefit analysis through surveys historical reviews number of tickets uh surveys specific surveys historical reviews specific historical reviews and specific customer journey analysis okay which takes you or gives you a proxy that something is wrong with the completion time okay did you guys understand how we tried to narrow up, uh, you know and try to come up with some four to five factors which would help us decide if we should implement this idea or not okay did you guys understand this how we are coming up and narrowing, narrowing it down you know the understanding this difference might be a very like minute process i would say but if you could you know reach this particular stage where you could finalize on one single thing uh, this is this like a very good place to be in okay okay all right so i see only two or three people have understood others are, are you guys not understanding did you guys understand yeah okay nice so are you understanding like how much time have we spent in this right just to figure out what kind of analysis we need to do okay assume now let's just say you come up with all this analysis that you have to perform okay and then you will basically start looking into the data and you can check if you need to build you if it's worth investing or not okay let's just say you check the data you see that now it's worth investment okay worth investment based on the gauge that you so because investment why because lot of problems faced by customer because of first long waiting times and inaccurate uh predictions let's just say in case if there was older predictions and also drivers seems to be very much excited about this feature getting launched because they can earn more incentive let's just say this was the outcome okay, of your analysis okay then you go ahead and you go ahead and build this okay and obviously like the investment cost is let's say minimal okay why is it minimal i mean it, in real world it's not going to be actually minimal but let's just say it's under the budget okay it's under the budget okay let's say this is the outcome and obviously you have a return on investment whatever is your success metric okay you see that you have some potential increase okay we'll probably talk more about the success metric when we do an ab testing and all that but let's just say you know right now that there's demand for it based on all these factors okay you go ahead you will now build a ml prediction system to to predict the delivery times or the right times or the completion times okay okay and you will check into deviations and you will basically come up with a system which should be better than our older system which was itd ps okay so now you would think about how to solve this problem okay so you would now think about factors affecting the trip completion time okay now you would think about them now you know that yes you have to build this feature so now you will think about how well or how accurately i can build the predictions okay what can i do so that the predictions are accurate for that find out what are the factors affecting the trip completion time okay define your current state this we have already discussed then gap i mean then future state and then what would be the gap right how you can solve the gap to reach the future state okay 
then you talk about some hypothesis or let's just say factors when you mention you are mentioning some hypothesis as well right so you are creating some hypothesis saying like distance more distance implies more more completion time okay so now you see my hypothesis is not about gauging whether there is a demand for the completion time feature or not my hypothesis right now is for checking how can i get more accurate completion time okay so if the distance is higher that means more will be the completion time okay similarly let's just say let's say uh, area where number of drivers is let's just say uh, less than uh, or let's say area okay let's say number of drive i'm just trying to come up with a metric on the fly number of drivers available divided by area size okay okay so what would you think in case if the area is too large okay and the number of drivers available is very less what would happen what would happen then what you can imply is basically you have a lot you might have a lot of demand because the area size is very high but the drivers are very less in number okay so you can check into this factors right you can check if this is affecting your completion time or not similarly if the number of drivers available if they are high in number okay but the area size is very less okay what does that mean it's a congested area where you have a lot of demand okay and that might affect the completion time why because in case if the area size is very small you have more number of com uh, drivers completion time is most likely to be less completion time to be less in the other case where the drivers available are very low and area size is going to be very high then you know the completion time can be higher okay so this could be one metric you can define some similar metrics yes so i want again so uh, i mean i we can go and discuss all these factors i i'm sure you guys are able to think of this okay so now you would think about the multiple factors you will test them on based on the data that you have you will identify which are the factors based on correlation statistics hypothesis testing uh this hypothesis that you test and then you will identify okay these are the most likely factors which are affecting your delivery time okay but as soon as you was going to start with your analysis you got a uh let's just say you got to know that all the data is stored in bigquery okay all the data is stored in bigquery okay and then we'll have a part two okay so this is like a movie all the data is stored in bigquery we'll see what is bigquery what is gcb but all the data is stored in gcb bigquery and there is more advantage of going and building models in gcb bigquery ml instead of python okay now you have no idea what is now you have no idea of gcb bigquery ml and you need to learn and deliver the results within let's say 10 days okay within 10 days okay so i always try to keep my problem statements in a story wise fashion because in case in interviews they will have a behavior round where they ask you what are the challenges that you have faced right what are the difficult projects that you have tackled okay and these are real world problems okay and now you might be able to relate okay and you can tell in those behavior or you know like all those kinds of interviews that this was situation where i was stuck i didn't literally know because i had no idea about gcp and this was a very challenging situation but i took up the initiative i learned whatever like how you learned whatever you learned and then i was able to solve this problem 
ठीक है आई मीन दिस इज जस्ट एन एडिशनल थिंग आई मीन आई कैन डायरेक्टली गिव यू द जीसीबी बिग क्वेरी कमांड एंड यू नो टेल यू हाउ टू राइट कोड एंड ऑल बट आई ऑलवेज प्रेफर गिविंग लाइक अ स्टोरी सो दैट यू गाइस एंजॉय इट एंड एट द सेम टाइम यू हैव अ लॉट मोर टू टॉक अबाउट दिस ठीक है सो हियर वी टेक अ पॉज विल टेक अ ब्रेक दिस इज लाइक योर इंटरवल एंड देन विल कम बैक विद पार्ट टू वेयर we'll see how did we tackle this challenge okay in 10 days how did we learn about gcp bigquery what was the reason why they said like gcp bigquery why not python okay and how did we come up with this analysis and how did we build the model okay so most probably we'll complete this project tomorrow only uh, and then uh, you would basically decide if that model can be deployed or not okay so right now are you guys enjoying this flavor in this way of storytelling or do you want me to like quickly just show you the codes and all theek okay. hai are you guys enjoying it can i get a big yes or a big boom let's go with a big boom can i get a big boom if you guys are enjoying this way of storytelling yeah awesome theek okay. hai so this way we are not only increasing our technical capabilities we are also increasing our problem solving skills which would definitely help you in your case study rounds theek okay. hai this if you are interviewing for any uh, like product based companies this you can expect one round only on this theek okay. hai so at that point of time you can you i mean uh, hopefully in a good way you remember me okay not to like uh, curse me at that time like probably what i had told you was absolutely rubbish but in a good way where you feel like oh nice i mean i have seen similar situation before and i can tackle this okay and then you can talk about more okay cool so let's take a break uh, probably let's join back in 15 minutes i'll see you guys in 15 minutes Well, I'll tell you what is GCP BigQuery. You'll learn about Google Cloud Platform. I'll tell you about BigQuery. Why do we use it, and how to set it up. Okay, and we'll look into some small data analysis before we uh, end the day. Okay, tomorrow I think we'll majorly focus on building the models, coming out the iterations using SQL. That is going to be an interesting challenge as well. And I'll give you some assignments as well, and uh, you would have a good. hold of sql as well okay so i'll see you guys in 15 minutes let me start the timer all right uh, uh, before leaving sir can you please just show that uh, case uh, three cases you showed the most important one the first one i we just i just wanted to revise that but we were discussing that sure sure so the customer opened the app selected a ride uh, and it showed 5 minutes 10 dollars mm -hmm. Five minutes. These five minutes are for uh, the cab to reach to the customer before the ride begins. Correct. Okay. And system searches for the cab drivers, but the customers drops. Means that the system took more than five minutes to search for the cab. Uh, uh, to, to the for the drivers. Exactly. Okay. So we took two cases. One is let's just say if there was five minutes shown. Yes, that could be a case where system took more than five minutes. That's why the customer decided to drop. Else, if let's just say there was no prediction system in place, okay, and all it was shown is like the amount it's going to cost. Okay, then what could have been the reason is it took so much time that the customer couldn't wait, right? I mean, customer was getting late. That's why they decided to drop. Okay. 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 So we have two cases in this. One where the time is not there. and the Correct. customer drops second where the time is there but it took actually it was more uh, took more time and the customer drops exactly exactly and but both are around more taking more time right that's why we are going ahead with a proxy that this kind of analysis can give us an insight whether we should build this feature or not because this is exactly answering our question that if the customer was given that feature where he was given an accurate prediction time first scenario would have been handled so would have been second because now customer would have known what would have been the waiting time yeah and here it is not the trip duration time it is just the time for the cab to reach hmm. to the customer correct that's a good point time. actually uh, yeah so actually ideally we are talking about the trip completion time so we should be mentioning the trip completion time and not that single time but let's just say the feature can be broken down okay i mean it yes. can be broken down into multiple things Okay, so one one time is the cab reaching the customer, and other time will be the uh, trip duration time. So here in the case one, we are just focusing on currently the uh, cab reaching the customer and why exactly. he's getting. Exactly. Yes, makes sense. Yes. Okay, I yeah. think yeah. Okay, thank you.
all right let me reset this uh i'll see you guys in 15 minutes at uh i guess at three two okay let me start the time all right are you guys back Are you guys back? Okay, thanks. Rupesh, Ramachandra, Shruti, Akshay. Okay. Did you guys bring popcorn and all? Did you guys bring like popcorn, nachos and Pepsi? Okay, so let's complete the, uh, yeah, complete the part after the movie. After the indoor, sorry. Yeah, after the indoor, yeah. Hmm. Oh, right. We have match as well going on. Right? Nice, nice. Are you guys watching India-Pakistan uh, match in like another tab? Oh, okay, okay, okay. I see. You guys are multitaskers. Okay, nice. Even I am curious right now, so I couldn't stop myself from checking it right now. Uh, okay, nice. Okay. Cool. Uh, mm -hmm. Let's continue. Okay. Uh, from where we left. Uh, so let me share back the document. Uh, ta, ta, ta. Okay. So before going for the break, we discussed that the scenario which has been introduced is we have to now deal with GCP BigQuery because there is some advantage of it. Okay. And the advantage is something that we'll have to now figure out what is the advantage. And earlier, let's just say, or commonly people use Python, but the restriction is they want in GCP BigQuery because there's a suitable advantage for it. Okay. Another thing is uh, there will be some reason. What is that advantage and what is that reason why we are going with it? We'll figure out in a while. But before that, I uh, want to just quickly summarize that we'll have to build a ML prediction model that is going to give us, so this were the final points, right? First, we have to basically look into the right completion times and see if there are a lot of deviations. Okay. Second, we have to build a ML model system which should perform better than the ITDPS. Okay. And it should be good enough so that it can be launched as well. Okay. And finally, uh, this was one more thing. Like we had to check if it was worth investing or not. So for that, we came up with multiple ideas. Okay. So let's go ahead. Let's see what is GCP BigQuery first. All right. So let's start. Okay, let's start with GCP BigQuery. How many of you are aware of GCP BigQuery, by the way? Are you guys aware of it? Can you quickly type in a one or zero? Zero, one, zero, zero, zero. Okay, okay. okay. I see majority of you are not, but uh, probably Hema, I think, is available. Oh, nice. Hema, are you working in some uh, data science, data analytics domain? Uh, I work as an uh, architect in GCP. Oh, nice. So you have your home itself in GCP. Okay. So you would be definitely a lot familiar with it. Mm -hmm. I see. Nice. Okay. Uh, so let's quickly start then. What is GCP BigQuery? Let's quickly see. Okay. So let me start with a simple Google search. Let's say I go to Google. I type GCP BigQuery. Right. So GCP stands for Google Cloud Platform. Okay. BigQuery is a specific uh, SQL compiler, I would say, in the Google Cloud Platform. Okay. I shouldn't say SQL compiler. I, sh I would more call it as a data warehouse. Okay. Um, and let's quickly see what is, first of all, Google Cloud Platform. Okay. So Google Cloud Platform, as the name says, it's a cloud platform, right? And this is specifically maintained by Google. And now 
what is a cloud platform? You might already know about it. You might have a fair idea. So platforms like AWS, Azure, GCP, right? These are by multiple companies. Different, different companies have different, different cloud platforms. So cloud platform is nothing but a platform where you can store the data in the cloud, right? You can do some transformations. You can just deal or manage with the data in the cloud, okay? So GCP is just a platform where you can store the data in Google's cloud servers, which they have already created, okay? So now in that, in that cloud platform where you can do multiple things, you can store data, like you can do a lot of things. Let's just say you could write SQL queries, which for them to run, let's just say you are analyzing like billions and trillions of data, okay? If you were to do it locally on your device, you would have to install some compiler and you'll have to do it, okay? But it might not be that fast because your compiler would use resources of your own laptop, okay? And your laptop configuration might not be that advanced compared to if you are using Google's own cloud resources. Imagine like uh, any company which has created its own cloud platform, it's offering you its own resources to run a query, okay? And that resources will help you to run faster queries and implement projects in a much shorter time as compared to running locally on your devices in case if you don't have very good configurations in your laptop. And most, 90% of the laptops are not that well configured, okay? Now, the ideology is basically with big in GCP, which is a cloud platform, you have something called as BigQuery, okay? Which is a data warehouse where you can simply write SQL queries, which would run using Google Cloud Platform, okay? It will take resources from Google Cloud and it will run them, okay? So every resulting in what? Basically, you can analyze much more higher dimensions of data. You can analyze like TVs of data, which might take a lot of time to do it locally because of the laptop configurations. It would run faster, okay? Now, Google Cloud cost something. There will be some cost attached to it. And now, customer will basically have to, you know, pay that price and through that, they will be able to run that. Okay. So basically there's a cost incurred on any of the cloud platforms, which are seen right now. Okay. Even to run queries, there's a cost attached because you are using their resources, right? And they want to monetize it. So that's why they have kept it because obviously to, for them to maintain all the servers, it takes a lot of money. Okay. It's not like they can maintain it for free for them to just run or be existent, they need to ensure that they are getting enough money. That's why they charge money for storing the data, for uh, running the queries, okay? For everything, there'll be a cost attached, okay? But they offer a free 300, I think, dollars uh, free trial where you get like 300 credits uh, free. So that you can first utilize and then you can go on with uh, your, uh, you know, paid versions, okay? So, Right now, we don't even require those 300 credits. All, all we'll do will be completely free. So you don't have to worry about, you know, setting up a credit card or paying anything. Uh, if we are not even going to use the free trial as well. Okay. Cool. All right. Let's move forward. Uh, hmm. So let me start with this. This is the official documentation, as you can see, right? It says Google Cloud, right? And then it's specifically for BigQuery. As I said, Google Cloud will have multiple things, okay? One of them is BigQuery, okay? So, yeah. So just read the first two lines, okay? I want you to go through this first paragraph, okay? Um, just read this quickly, okay? I want you to read this. Cool. So let's quickly see what is it. So BigQuery is a fully managed enterprise data warehouse, okay? So mainly it's a data warehouse, okay? So what is basically a data warehouse? We'll quickly see, but what does it do? It just helps you to analyze your data with built-in features like machine learning, okay? So it has a built-in feature through which you can build machine learning models, okay? Do geospatial analysis. So this is something which we are not going to use right now and use some business intelligence uh, tool features, okay? So this also will try to look, right? Then BigQuery serverless architecture lets you use SQL queries as well to answer your questions with zero infrastructure management. Why? Why do you think there's zero infrastructure management? Why do you think there is zero infrastructure management? Why don't you have to like, you know, come up with good laptops or come up with a good 
infrastructure or a good system why is it saying like it's zero infrastructure because everything is on yes no need of on premise yes everything is on cloud correct okay so everything is on cloud bigquery scalable why is it scalable because everything is happening on cloud why is there distributed analysis so scalable means it can handle a lot of data okay distributed simply means like it can use distributed computing power which is through distributed uh, engine so this is something like uh, it can divide work it can distribute the work into multiple uh, task and each task can be efficiently executed okay and it can help you query terabytes in seconds and petabytes in minutes this is a very big advantage okay because any i mean i won't say any other compiler but other local compilers can't do that okay i can guarantee that all the compilers locally that i have seen for petabytes it definitely is going to take you more than minutes i have seen cases where it takes like hours and hours and overnight you just put it to run next morning you would find that it's still not executed okay so this is one advantage with scalability with distributed analysis and uh, the faster execution time okay one more thing is basically when you de when you build models with machine learning you are analyzing the data in sql and in bigquery okay then you are let's say analyzing tbs of data okay you are storing the data there itself okay and uh, you are building the model on the same platform you on bigquery okay so what happens is this models get built very quickly because this models will be also directly deployed to the cloud okay so you don't have to like you know import the data in csv and then uh, you know like build the model using that it's directly in gcp you are going to gcp you are directly building the model there itself in bigquery okay I, else wise if you do it through python what would happen is you will have to first import the data you will import the data you will use some package like scikit or something you will build the model this model will have to be deployed to the cloud okay why do you need to deploy it basically you need to deploy it to the cloud so that the uber app which will, will be used they can utilize the predictions okay for that you'll have to deploy it okay now there are multiple kinds of deployment techniques i think if you have studied ml ops you would know about it. but in case if you have not not nothing to worry about but in short the uh, understanding is if you have to deploy it it's again going to take a lot of task okay it's not like an easy task if you build the models in python but what bigquery does is it directly gives you the model already built in cloud so you don't have to separately deploy it in the cloud okay so one step which is a very big step is reduced it's directly stored in the cloud you go there you directly like uh, you know tell whatever the uber app is that the model is stored in this location in the cloud okay and it will pick up the predictions from there okay so this is the advantage of bigquery over python okay so there where you have to have additional steps bigquery reduces that and obviously it offers this scalability and distributed computing uh, you know uh, power which is very valuable in today's uh, time okay so i think companies right now have also started asking for bigquery in uh, job description so when i was interviewing i found this specifically in some of the uh, companies job descriptions specifically they had mentioned like uh, gcp a bigquery should be in your knowledge is it same as snowflake uh, yes i think so snowflake i think is with aws uh, sql compiler right if i am not wrong i think snowflake is that correct hmm yes it's same thing yes snowflake is aws data warehouse this is gcp's uh, bigquery yeah okay cool so now let's proceed ahead okay uh, so i want you guys to probably uh, so there are two options for you let me know which one are you more comfortable with one option is you set up the bigquery along with me like you open your laptop and you parallelly work else i just tell you how to set it up and you can do it post the session like watching the recording probably okay or else like you can just learn and you can do it uh, after the session that's all so you want to do it parallelly just setting it up or you want to do it uh, post the workshop are you guys like having laptops and all uh, for setting it up parallel okay, it's going to take like 10 to 15 minutes i would say in setting it up 
parallel. Okay, let's try to do it parallel in case if we feel that, uh, you know, there is some issue or people are lagging. I would request that you always have a recording so you can go back and check the recording. Okay, but uh, let's try to do it in parallel first. Okay, okay, just give me a moment. I need to put it to charge. All right. Uh, so hmm, there is a demand in GCP with machine learning. Yes, there is a lot of demand. So, I mean, the ML engineers that you see, they write customized code for deploying the models from Python to like, uh, you know, like GCP, AWS, Azure. So those are, this is the work of ML engineers. Okay. And I mean, uh, that is definitely like another branch of data science, you can say. A GCP Vertex AI using MLOps, yes. So we are not going to use Vertex AI right now, but Vertex AI is definitely a good to know skill. Uh, if you are aware of what is the power of Vertex AI right now, and if you can build ML pipelines using Vertex AI, that is also a very good skill to have, okay? I personally have worked with Vertex AI for I think six to seven months when I was working at Mu Sigma. Uh, there we have built ML pipelines using Vertex AI. So Vertex AI is nothing but a AI, I would say code builder. I mean, not a code builder, but a platform where you can write AI codes. Okay, you can create like end-to-end -end ML pipelines and this is not in SQL, okay? So you have your own, uh, you know, set of syntax where you can uh, write code from scratch for everything, okay? BigQuery just supports SQL, okay? So we'll see all of them together. So let me open this link. Okay, let me share the link, okay? Uh, let me actually paste it over here as well. Okay. So GCP BigQuery, let's start with steps. Okay. Let me put it in the chat as well. Okay. So I've sent the link. Um, hmm. Okay. So in this link, go to this place, get started with BigQuery. You would find something called as BigQuery Sandbox. Okay. Let me open that. Okay. Once you reach there, you will find something like enable the BigQuery Sandbox and you will find go to BigQuery. Okay. Go to BigQuery. So Sandbox is just a platform where you can uh, do things for free without, uh, you know, getting any cost. See, Get started with BigQuery Sandbox, risk-free and no cost. Okay? So it's completely free just for playing around. Okay. So now we'll go to BigQuery. Let me open this. Okay. So this, so you have two options, guys. Like you can do it parallel in case if you're not able to cope up with my speed. Uh, you can only concentrate right now. You can do it uh, post the workshop. You can watch the last one hour recording and uh, you can like follow it as well. Okay whatever you feel you are more comfortable with. Okay, uh, cool. So now let's quickly see this workspace. Okay, so for you might, I mean, workspace will be very different. For me, the workspace might be different. Like, I mean, I have already all these projects mentioned because I've already worked in the past, but for it might not show anything. Okay, but tell me one thing, like, have you guys reached till here? Have you guys reached till here? How many of you have reached till here? Yeah. Okay, nice. So, will try to do something okay so one thing is hmm, nice so this is your sql workspace okay as you can see this is your sql workspace i can write some queries okay if i go to some you know uh, compose new query tab i can start writing some queries okay but before we go let's set it up we have over here navigation menu okay towards the left here you see there are multiple things under Google Cloud, right? This is Google Cloud. And what what do you, what all do you see? You see something called as, uh, you have something called as BigQuery, okay? Uh, okay, I think, okay. okay. So over here, we are looking into BigQuery right now, okay? which is just one of the things that, as I mentioned in Google Cloud, okay? And there are multiple other things, okay? Now, in specifically in BigQuery, where are we? We are in the SQL workspace, okay? We are basically writing code in the workspace, okay? Next. Okay. So over here, I have a project set up. Okay. So I want you guys to go over there. Okay. Click on it. Create, create a new project. Okay. Create a new project. Give a project name, any suitable name, which you feel 
and this will be permanent okay you can't change it so you can give any name like if you want to give tutor academy like uh, some name for this project just give it take it keep it short because you'll have to query this all the time so just keep it short but make sure it's unique by adding some numbers or something like that which ensures it's new unique okay so i have like 11 projects which i can create okay uh location just mention it as just left leave it keep it no organization and create it okay once you create it what will happen is you would be able to see it okay you would be able to see it over here when you go over here you would be able to see the project and the corresponding id okay now just select that just ensure there's a tick mark and the project is selected once you select it it would show up over here for example i created a project called my first project the id is snappy benefit which was the uh, id associated with it and the project name is showed here which is the my first project okay cool okay let's move forward then what i want to do is i will be using this project and whatever queries that i'll be writing will be stored inside this project okay just like creating a project and inside it i'm going to write some queries okay so let's move forward okay now basically i need to i can write some queries and all that so that is uh, like a different task but what gcb bigquery what gcb bigquery already offers is so gcb bigquery already has some public data sets to play around okay so basically it offers directly some play, uh, you know public data sets that you can use to play around okay so i just want to quickly show you one example okay so now when you go to this explorer and you go on type to search okay you can search for project names which are inbuilt or what you have created okay for example let's say if you search for something like firebase public project okay or let's just search for bigquery public data or, or let me be more specific let's say you just search for uh, so all these are the name of the projects which are already stored in google okay google uh, cloud so i can use them okay let's say i open the hacker news okay when i open the hacker news what opened is this data set you see the data set name is hacker infos and the data set id let's copy this so i just copied it to my clipboard the where is this data set stored what is the project name it's bigquery public data right you see the project name is bigquery public data and inside it we had a data set which was uh, hacker news okay so let's quickly go over there uh, hmm. this was the hacker news which is the data set okay then if i open it what do i see i see a table which is called full let me open that this is called a table okay let's try to preview this okay so now we can look into the table okay but before i go ahead let me show you the table so this is the table right if you check in the details it has a id now id is first bigquery public data which was the project name then hacker news the data set and then the table name okay this is the convention to query in sql always remember first the project name then dot then data set name dot table name okay so project will have multiple data sets right data sets a single data set will have multiple tables okay and tables will have like multiple rows and columns so let's check the schema you can directly check the schema using bigquery okay so this has like title url and it tells me like if it's string it's boolean if you know uh, okay nullable is fine description as well which is already stored by google's cloud team okay so it tells you about the particular column here upesh could you please explain how we are getting this hacker news okay so all you have to do is you'll have to first uh, search for bigquery public data okay in your type to search okay. uh then just scroll down and you'll find the hacker news in the public data set this option is not visible in our chat uh is it not showing for you no okay okay then do one thing if it's not directly showing for you just go to add okay click on add 
then star, uh, search for and star a project. Okay, click on this. Okay, and now give the name of the project or that BigQuery public data set, whatever the name was, right? Just give it and uh, select it. Automatically, what will happen is it would be uh, shown towards the left once you select that. What is the project name? Can you repeat? Yeah. Data. Let me put it in the chat. I think we can search Hacker News directly. I think so. Ye, ha, try searching for Hacker News as well. In case if uh, Hacker News is directly giving you the answer, you can go ahead with that as yeah. well. Yeah. Sure. So I've pasted the uh, you know the ID, so you can try that as well. Cool. So I'm assuming you guys would reach over here. Uh, me... No, not able to reach. Can can I share my screen for two minutes? Uh, no. wait, wait. Can you uh, tell what's the issue? Like, uh, are you not able to find this? No, in that part, I write hacker news. Uh. In the search option, but it is not showing any result. Uh, did you search correctly? Hacker underscore news. Uh, yes, hacker underscore news. Hacker space news, and then it search all projects. Hmm. Click on search That's all projects, up. and you okay. should find it. Uh, did it's you find it? It's showing me the hacker. Uh, did you find it? Uh, no, it is not showing. Oh, did you click on search? Okay, okay, yes, 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 got it, got it now. Okay. Hacker okay. news and then full. Ha, huh. then full, yes, correct. Okay, okay, got it, thank you. Clear, okay. nice. Chalo. So now once you reach over here, you would see the table ID. You would see when it was created, when it was last modified, if it's set to expire, like some tables, you can set it to expire as well, okay? Data location we'll talk about later. Uh, apart from this, there's a description which the creator of this table would have mentioned. And you can see like number of rows, how much space is occupying. Okay. Uh, logical and physical bytes, you don't have to like really know about it. I mean, this is something from OS uh, domain operating system, but uh, obviously like the more number of bytes, the more space it's going to occupy. Okay. In short, that's what the logic is. Okay. Now we go to so we have seen schema, which just tells you what columns are there and what is the data type of the column and the description of the columns. We went to details, which told us about the table origins. Finally, we went to preview. Okay, Preview just gives you a visualization of how the table looks like. So you can see there's a column called row, title, URL, text, date, by, score, time, and all that. Okay? And you can start querying this data. Okay. So if I want to query this data, what I can do, I can query, I click on query, go to new tab. Okay. And let's just say I want to select star from this particular table. And let's say I specify a limit of only, let's say one. Okay. I'll just execute this. Okay. And now I get the first row. Okay. Can you please repeat the last step once again? Yeah. Just go to the table. Once you open the table, click on preview. Click on query and click on new tab. You can click split tab as well, but uh, let's just say you click on new tab for now. And then you would be redirected to a new tab and just write this uh, select star from the table limit one. Okay. Are you guys able to see the output? Yeah. Cool, nice. Okay, so through this, you can actually work on hundreds of pre existing data records. Okay, you can practice SQL a lot using this pre existing uh, table records. Okay, so sorry, different records. Yeah, I mean, you might have a different record, nothing to worry about it, but uh, main thing is you should have at least one row in the output. Okay, cool. So let's quickly move forward. Uh, hmm. So now we create used a public data set and we saw how to write a simple SQL query using BigQuery. Okay? So nice, we are 50% done. Okay? Let's focus on creating our own data set. Okay? So let's say, I mean, in real world, what would have happened is your company would already store the data, would already store the data in BigQuery. Okay? So here you're using a public data set, right? This one. 
but let's just say you have your own project name under which you have your own data set and you would have your own table so this would already be let's say created in your company okay but over here since we have not created for you i would want you to do it manually i'll tell you how to do it manually but assume like in the real world it's going to be already created okay by your company yeah if you, uh, if you, if you yeah i'm having error sorry i have error syntax error select list must not be empty at one and nine uh, can you copy paste your uh, query in the chat Oh, so you guys didn't mention select star, right? You guys need to mention select star. Okay, cool. Mention select star and it should be fine. Yeah. All right, let's move forward. Uh, hmm. So next thing, let's just say now uh, you have to create your own custom data set. Okay. This is going to be, uh, you know, the main part. So I'll be sharing two CSVs with you. Okay. Uh, this CSVs. So let's say the data that you have, one is for riders. Okay. And one, another one is basically place info, okay, which just tells you about the source and de destination info. And the first one is going to be about the ride details. Okay. Basically like uh, rider, uh, trip ID, and uh, you know the completion time so you have details around that so i'll basically share this details with you these two csvs but in real world the assumption is the tables were already created okay so now what you have to do is you have to use these two csvs and convert them to bigquery tables okay so um hmm. okay let me pause the share for a moment i just need to open my personal google drive I'm just sharing the link with you guys. Uh, syntax might be different, uh, Adamia. So basically MySQL might have a very, uh, I mean, not very, but a little different syntax as compared to BigQuery, okay? Um, so that's the only difference. Uh, so you can instead use directly BigQuery, okay? Uh, let me share this uh, link. With all of you. Okay, so this is the link where I've stored two CSVs. Okay, one is rights, one is place info. Okay, what we have to do is download these two CSVs on your local. Okay, just download them, then come back to our BigQuery. Okay, now we'll have to create a table. Okay, let me quit this. Okay, so for me, I've already created the table, but I'll tell you how to do this. If you look my project snappy benefit and this number under that, I have created a data set called test three, okay? not a good name for a data set, but assuming it's that and under that I have two tables. Okay. Under that I have two tables and I've already created like four ML models. Okay. So my four ML models are X1, X2, X5, X6 and all we'll see that later, but you see this table has a, like a dark icon color okay it's like a dark icon color which signifies it's a table okay now i have two tables already created place info and rights so let's see how you can do that okay for you you might be seeing your own personal project name okay which you just created like for me my first project is snappy benefit right that's what my id is okay this is what is showing over here similarly for you also it will be showing your project because you have created it okay in that click on the three dots here Click on create data set. Okay. Go to create data set. Give a good name. Okay. Give a good name. Something like you can give it like uh, you can give tutor probably, you know, since this is your project for tutor attacking, you can give it like that. And if you want to give any numbers, give it or just keep it tutor. Then in location type, select multi region and select US, this option, multiple regions in US. Okay don't set any table expiration date okay so table is not going to expire by default you are not setting anything don't go into advanced options just uh you know give the data set id and create it okay so once you create it you would be able to uh see it over here okay 
So I have already created a data set called test three. Okay. This is my data set test three. Cool. Have you guys uh, let me know if you have created it in the chat. Please, can you go can you go through the process again? Sure. So basically, you have your own project name, uh, right? Over okay. here, just click on the three dots. Click on create data set. Okay. Get the data set name. Select multiple multi region and select this option of US multiple regions in US. That's it. Okay. So I kept the name as test three. You can keep it according to your wish. Okay. Yeah, test three is obviously like not a very good name. I just was testing something. That's why I did, uh, you know, kept it. I don't see my project name. Uh, where, did you add your project? Did you add your project? Did you select it while over here? Ensure that it's click, uh, you know, tick marked over here. Okay, and it's starred as, I mean, star is not necessary, but uh, it should be selected. Okay. In case you don't see it, just refresh your console, like uh, just refresh your BigQuery. You should be able to see this. Okay, nice. Others, you have completed it, right? Everyone with me? Yeah? Okay, nice. Uh, Weber, this is sorted. All right, uh, let's move forward. Okay, nice. Cool. Let's go forward. Then now you have a data set. For me, it's test three. For you, it would be your data set name under your project name. Okay. So ignore the rest. These are something which I have already created. So ignore the other data sets, but focus on test three. Take it. Right now, your test three would be blank. It would be empty. Okay. It won't have any tables under it. Okay. So now what I want you guys to do is click on this three dots. Okay. Click on this three dots and click on create table. We created a project. We created a uh, data set and now we are click, uh, creating a table. Okay. Click on that and you will land up over here. Okay. Next. Uh, yeah, Rupesh. There is an issue uh, in creating this uh, data set. What is the issue? I'm selecting my project mm -hmm. and after that, uh, I'm not getting any option uh, to create the uh, other steps. Uh, just ensure you're selecting the project only and nothing else. Uh, just ensure it's not like any other public data set or uh, something it which is, is... it is showing the uh, it is showing the previous search result as well. So when I'm going to click three dots, then I think I am able to create. I'm not able to create in their space. Did you close the previous search? Did you click on the cross? Uh, cross button is not here. There should be a cross when you search for this. For example, when I search for Hacky News, right? This cross button comes up. See? Okay. Okay. Uh, but cool. still, it's not there. Have you ensured that this is selected properly? Mm, yes. Okay. Uh, are you seeing these three dots? No, I'm not able to see my project here. Did you refresh your BigQuery? This link? Yeah, this link. Just refresh it. One minute. Uh, is it done? Mm. No, it is, it is not. Can I show my screen? Uh, okay, check the message of JP Sama once. Project name will not be displayed. The ID of the project will be displayed. Just ensure that, uh, you know, the ID is displayed, right? I mean, you, you are saying like you are not seeing anything itself, correct? I can paste the snapshot in this chat if you want. Uh, yeah, can you paste it? One minute. Mm. 
Yeah, it is today. Uh, so isn't this organic cursor your project uh, your project organic cursor no no this this hello yeah, i'm checking uh, but i have not created this organic cursor hey, organic cursor definitely would be your project because i know by default it's not uh, uh, you know like open okay, data okay, okay 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 yes, so yes, you I'm only have created now able to create okay yeah yeah okay fine for this for this cool so let's move forward then uh you basically would have reached till test three go to test three click on the three dots and create the table test three is i mean it would be your own uh data set create table from select upload take it go to upload and upload your uh one csv right any uh let's say upload the first one which is uh rights take it which you downloaded the csv right right so upload that, uh, I mean, select upload and next one, select the CSV file. Okay. Just select upload and uh, upload the CSV file. Okay. By default, the file format will change to CSV. Okay. By default, it will change in case if it's not changing manually change it to CSV. Okay. So I will just quickly upload this, uh, let's say to rights. Okay. I've uploaded the rights. Next project will be your project. Data set will be the data set you just created. Give a table name. So let's say I gave a table name of rights. Okay. Because the file is of rights. I just named the table itself to rights. Okay. Keep it native. By default, I mean there won't be, I think, any other option. Just keep it to native only. Schema, keep it auto detect. So automatically it will detect the column headers okay, by your CSV file. So click on the auto detect, make it sure that it's check marked. Okay. Schema will be automatically generated. Okay. Partitioning, don't uh, like make any changes. Just keep it to no partitioning and create the table. Okay. Once you create the table, what will happen? Okay. Once you create the table, it will show up in the data set. Okay. It would show up over here as rights. Okay. For me, it's showing up in the rights and you can check it out. Okay. If you just open it up, it would show you like what are the columns that were there in the CSV and I can check the details. Uh, check the number of rows to be 50,000. Okay. The number of rows should be 50,000 and go to preview and you can visualize the table okay you see trip id membership this is the columns and the rows okay similarly do it for place info as well okay again go back to your data set i'm again repeating go back to the data set cl click on create table select upload upload the file this time upload the place info take it the next csv okay file format will automatically change to csv if not manually change it Keep the project and data set of yours. Give the table name. So let's say if I give the table name, let's say something like place info. Okay. Native table, make sure it's selected, auto detect, no partnership, nothing to be changed here. Just create the table. Okay. Your table will be created under your project name, data set, and table name will be place info. Okay. So once that is done, once you create it, you would be able to see it over here under test three place info and rights okay Th these two tables will be there okay so your, your data set will have two tables place info and rights okay it will show something like job has been created so let it run don't uh, do anything to it let it complete and i think within 10 20 seconds it should have completed yeah okay nice uh shruti others let me know if you have uploaded this because if you have uploaded, all we need to do is just start querying it. Okay, that's it. I'm having an error. Destination table is required. Uh destination table is required. Are you have you given the table name? So when you would have gone over here, create table, correct? Uh over here you need to give the table name, right? I think you would have missed that. Uh, are you there, Tiffy? Yes, I'm there. So, is it sorted? So, I have to go back. Okay. See, it shows destination table is required, right? So, I think you are also facing the same issue. So, just give a new table name. You can give any name which you want. 
and it will be okay. created. Okay. Uh, how to check total columns and rows out of the data set? So you can simply check it, open the table. Okay, let me show you. So let's say I want to check for place info. Okay, I'll click on the place info table. Okay, it opens up in a new tab. Now I want to check the number of columns and rows. One thing, if I go to details, what can I see? I can simply see the number of rows. So place info has 102 rows. For column, it won't show you directly the number of columns. You'll have to manually count this or you'll have to write a query to count the number of columns. Okay? So, I mean, I can tell you the query to write it, but uh, let's look at it later. For now, let's just manually count it. Okay? I have created it, although it is showing directly under my project name. Uh, directly under your project name. Shouldn't happen like that. Check if you created it properly, if you mentioned the data set name and uh, is your data set empty then? Is your data set showing empty then? No, uh, no, it's not showing empty. It is showing the tables under uh, like 120 tables. Oh, sorry, 120 uh, under details. Uh, no, I'm asking about the data set. As you're saying, like your you also created a data set called test three, right? No, um, I have created uh, just a second, please. Okay, so basically you would have created your own data set, right? You might not have named it as test three, whatever name that you would have given, you just need to create the table inside that. Okay, go to that, create the table. And for you, the data set name might be different. Use that. Your project name might be different. Use that. Table name, feel free to give anything. If you want to give table uh, name as rights, feel free to just give it rights. Similarly, if you want to give it for place info, just give it as place in. Okay. I mean, you can give any name which you want. Okay. okay. I have I have done uh, done that thing. I have already uploaded both the data sets uh, under my project. So what's the issue then? Uh, the issue is the uh, it is not showing under test three. It, uh, so uh, name could be anything, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Cool. I'm good then. Yeah. Thanks. Okay, okay. I think it cool. is it is coming in the like if you saw the screen it is coming in the snappy benefit. So okay. maybe you have you have uh, clicked with the help of those three dots after the snappy benefits. Correct. Snappy benefits. Correct. Then you create the data set. Test three gets created. Then you click on test three data sets three dots and then the tables get created below it. Correct. Cool. Everyone here. All good. So this is the base. Okay, now you can start querying it. Okay, so let's quickly run a small query. So assuming like you guys have also named it as a uh, ride and place info. I mean, whatever names you have given for your table, but for me, it shows ride and play place info. So let's open ride. I open this. I go to details. I copy the location table ID. Okay, I'm just copying it. Okay, open any new query or any composer just open this and i'll uh, whatever i have copied i'm going to use it okay so i'm going to write select star from okay and i'm going to write i'm going to paste this okay so let me put a limit as well so let's say i'm saying limit only to 10 rows okay and you can click on run or you can simply press control and enter okay so i'm pressing control and enter See, I got the output and now that means everything that I've done is working completely fine. Okay? You would also get the same output. Uh, okay. Are you guys able to run the query? Let me know. Then we'll start the analysis. But uh, is your query running? Yeah. Okay, others, all with me. Okay, nice. Chalo. Let's move forward then. 
so now you are able to query it and you can see the top 10 rows okay similarly you can query it for place info as well that is my other table okay so let me quickly show it for that as well in that there are only 102 rows so i am not like putting any limit let it run completely cool so you see towards the bottom right over here right over here I see 102 rows are there. Okay. 102 rows are there. And this page only has like 50 results. So I can just select to like, uh, how many results I want to show on this page. So this would have like 50. Yeah. So till 50 are shown, then I need to change the page. Okay. And you can find 102 rows finally. Cool. So we'll start with the analysis, but, uh, I want you guys to first go through the schema know what are the columns, what all hypothesis we can test using this. Okay? And I want you guys to, you know, experiment by writing some SQL queries. Okay. Simple SQL queries, just try it out. Okay. For example, let's, I'll, I mean, I'll start with some of them. Uh, okay. Let's start with something very basic. Okay. So let's say I go to the rights table. Okay. As I said, the general convention to query first always mention the project name as we saw in the public data set as well. Then mention the test data. Oh, sorry. Uh, sorry. Mention the project name, then mention the data set name, and then mention the table name. Okay. This is always the structure. Cool. So in my rights, I have trip ID. I have membership type. I have vehicle number. I have vehicle type. I have source time. I have source ID, source name, destination ID, destination name, total time. Cool. Trip ID, very uh, easy to understand. Unique identifier for a trip. Membership type, we exactly don't know, but seems like could be some premium membership or something like that, which we have to figure out what is exactly it is. But uh, membership type, let's just say I want to figure out what are the distinct values in it, right? What are the unique values in membership type? So I can use a command called as distinct. Okay. I'll write distinct and give the column name. Okay. So distinct membership type. That's it. Okay. And I'll see what are the distinct values in it. Let's run, let's run this. I see there are a lot of distinct values. Okay. I think there are around 36 distinct values. Okay. Let's try to decode if we can decode local 365 pay as you write. Local 31 Explorer, three day weekender, student membership, hmm. 24 hour walk up, walk up pass, single trip, UT student membership, annual. Okay. So seems like this is basically like some membership, right? Where you can see if it's like a student pass, if it's like a annual pass, if it's like, a, a, you know, like a, some, some pass which people have purchased. Okay. So that's what we can imply from the name. Okay. Cool. So you can use the distinct command for that. Okay. okay. If you had to do this without using the distinct command, um, can you guys tell me how could have we done this? Can you write the query in the chat? Just copy paste the query in the chat. Let's see who can get the same output without using distinct. Okay. I mean, I'm sure you guys know SQL, right? So tell me in uh, SQL, if I had to get the same output, but without using distinct, okay? I want to see the unique membership types. Paste the SQL query in the chat. Hmm, nice, nice. Okay, so what you can simply do is you need to create a group, right? A group of membership type, okay? So what if, if I do select membership type and just group it? Okay. Group by what? You need to create unique groups of membership type. So let me just group it by the membership type only. Okay. If I run this, what will happen? See, I got the same output. I got the unique groups because I have created groups and I can see only 36 uh, rows. And I'm sure you guys would be aware of group by function, which is very uh, basic. So uh, this is one way you can do this. Okay. Interview question. Okay. Which is better? Okay, this is a, a interview question. Which is better, distinct or group by? Okay. Answer. Answer is basically uh, 
in terms of like code readability distinct looks better because let's just say you have multiple columns we have to we'll have to keep grouping it by one two three four five and all that it might look a little uh you know problematic but with distinct you simply need to write distinct that's it right i mean uh you don't have to mention multiple columns but in terms of uh you know efficiency and the time it takes for creating the uh data the groups and all group by is much more efficient okay it's much more faster than distinct okay so in terms of speed group by is a better choice group by can make group with other columns as well yes it can yeah hmm. okay Cool. I mean, this thing can also create, uh, you know, unique groups with other columns. So let's say if I just say like, uh, give me any other column name, you can, I can do that as well. Okay. Let me close the unnecessary tabs. Okay. Cool. So let's say, let's say I want to, uh, hmm, group it by membership type and vehicle type. Okay. Group it by membership type and vehicle type. I can do that as well. To create unique groups of that, I can simply write distinct and those two values. Okay, it will create a unique group of the combination. Okay, as you might imagine a group by. Cool. So now you see unique combinations are created. Okay, I can order it by just so that everyone understands. I'm ordering it by the membership type and vehicle type. Okay. So as you see, 24 hour walk up pass, classic and electric, similarly others have like, uh, you know, been grouped by seven day doesn't have any value under electric. Okay. Okay. Uh, did you guys understand till here? I, I think this is pretty, uh, you know, simple with SQL, but I just want to ensure everyone is with me. Did you guys understand till here? Yeah. Okay. Nice. So. Now, if I ask you guys to find some insights, some very basic insights, okay, you can join the tables, okay. I want you guys to figure out on what column can we join it, okay. I want you guys to figure out on what column can we join it. Let me open the tables. Okay, so let's, one is place ID, name, condition, location, uh, Length, breadth, remarks, area code, updated date. Let's quickly have a preview of the second table. Place ID is nothing but the uh, source or destination ID. Okay. Name, the name of the place. Condition, is it opened? Is it closed? Right. Location. Uh, so this is the exact location. Okay. It might be very similar to name. Okay. As you can see, but this is going to be like specific address. Ports is something like how many number of uh, ports are associated. That is like uh, some places might have like uh, shipping ports associated with them. Okay, So it just tells you if a place is having any port associated with it or not. Is it a solar powered place or is it a non-solar powered place? So it will tell you like it's solar or is it like electric, uh, which may be like metered, okay? uh, metered, non-metered. So it will tell you that. How much is the length? How much is the breadth of the place? If there is any remark, what is the area code? Some uh, code given to the area and places might be, you know, some places might be in the same area, right? So you see nine, nine might lie in the same area and updated date. So updated date is nothing but the uh, date at which this was executed. Okay. I mean, uh, the last time it was uh, updated this particular place information. Okay. So yeah. Cool. So you can probably think about how you can join this. Okay. So since it's place info, it will give you the information for the places. Okay. So you can think, yes, source name with location, check it, check if the column names, uh, you know, like, uh, look similar, then only you would be able to join it. Okay. Else think about something. Right. For example, you have source ID. So you can see if, you know, source ID and place ID, are they like matching? Similarly, you can match destination ID with the place ID. Okay. So you would get information for the source and destination. Okay. So I want you guys to execute this. Uh, you should be able to figure it out on your own. 
but in case if you are not we can also discuss uh, some basic things you can quickly check what is the minimum source time what is the maximum source time okay what is the minimum source time source time is the time at which uh, it started at the source at the rider's end okay so basically the rider's end the trip started at this time okay and destination time is nothing but the time at which the trip completed okay so here we don't have any destination time in this particular thing but what we have is total time through which we can identify what would have been the destination time okay i mean we don't really need it but in case if you want to create an additional column you can do analysis specifically for destination time as well right all you need to do is add uh, 52 minutes to the source time and you will get the destination time Hmm, like in your data, yes, correct, correct. Okay, so all things will do in SQL. So let's quickly. Uh, I just wanted to show a couple of things. So very basic things. Okay, let's say if I just want to check min and max. Okay, source type. I just want to identify what's the range. Okay. You might think Python might be more friendly, right? I mean, you can simply use dot describe and it gives you everything, right? So that is true, right? That is true. That is actually an advantage. But uh, over here, the limitation is we are used to like, uh, we are forced to use BigQuery because of the previously mentioned reasons. Okay? Let's see, the minimum time is going to be this. Maximum time is this, okay? So it means we have data from uh, 21st December, 21st December till 31st July, okay? and 2013 till 2023. Okay, so 10 years of data is available. This would be useful when we think about uh, machine learning as well. Okay, how do we save work? Just click on save. Okay, click on save. Click on save query. Give any name. So give name for the query. Let's say the name I gave is query one. I mean, not a very good name, but uh, let's say. Uh, Let's say I just write ED. Okay, I just write ED, and that's it. Okay, uh, keep it only to you. Uh, if you want to make it public, you can make it public as well, whatever you wish. But uh, for now, just keep it. I think personal only, yeah, and save it. That's it. It would be safe. Next time, whenever you open your console, you would be able to see your safe query as well. Okay, cool. So I want you guys to write multiple queries. Either use multiple tabs, okay, for multiple analysis that you do, or uh, just keep writing the query and copy paste the output in the uh, in a document okay for example as soon as i wrote this i'll just go to save results okay if the results is not very huge i mean there are not a lot of rows you can simply click on copy to clipboard and just paste this okay it will paste it and i can see the output and create a document out of it because uh, you can present that document in the end okay so I, this will be your homework i want you guys to create a doc Okay, create a doc, mention the queries, okay, and output correspondingly below it, uh, just mention the output. And uh, in case, in case if output is, uh, let's just say above 10 rows, above 10 rows, then only, uh, you know, like, uh, then just uh, paste the screenshot of first 10 rows. Okay, just paste the screenshot of the first 10 rows. So go to save results and, uh, you know, you can either directly copy to clipboard if there are like, uh, I mean, you can copy it, but I'm saying like, in case if there are more than 10 rows, just click on copy, uh, just cl click a uh, snapshot okay, and just paste it in the document. Okay, cool. Okay, and I want you guys to come up with multiple queries and analysis that you can do. Okay, not uh, very, I mean, you can try with simple things like I have done, but I want you guys to think about how you would do univariate analysis, right? Same things, what you do in Python, now think how would you do in SQL? What would happen is your SQL knowledge will for sure increase. Okay. Think about how you can do this. Okay. And now you would think like what insights should I find? Don't forget the problem that we are solving and accordingly think. Okay. For example, I can see what is going to be the average total time or the mean total time 
according to the vehicle time is it like electric vehicles you know take more time or is it like classic variables take more time okay so how can i do this i can simply find the uh, you know average of total time and group it by the vehicle time this will tell me which one is actually having more uh, this thing uh, travel time yeah similarly i want you guys to think about and uh, yeah Uh, so how to save work? As I said, like you can just open the query, click on save, save query, give any name. Let's say I just want to give it as EDA one. Okay, this is my EDA one query, and that's it. Visibility, just keep it personal and click on save, and it will save the query. Okay, and you would be able to see it next time you open BigQuery. Okay, cool. This will be stored. Okay, this won't get deleted. Uh, this will be now permanently stored until unless you delete it. Okay. Cool. Can I expect you guys to complete it by tomorrow, 1 p.m. before we attend tomorrow's session? Would you guys come up with at least 10 queries, 10 queries or 10 insights of your own? Okay. Can I expect that from you? In case if you don't, nice, nice. In case if you don't understand anything, feel free to use Google. Okay. Search about how to correct the syntax and all. Uh, you know, I can quickly show you the big query documentation. You can refer that as well for checking syntaxes. Okay. Go to query syntax. Okay, let me uh, share this in chat. Okay, so this is the syntax. Uh, you know, you see towards the right, you have select star, uh, unnest, pivot, join, inner join. Thing. You can use union. So you can, whatever you want to write, in case if you're facing any issue, you can just go. Let's say if I don't know how to write union, I'll just open the union and I can see some example. Okay, uh, search for union. Okay. Uh, yeah. So this is how you can write it, right? This is under a CT, but yeah, you get an idea, right? You union all, you can write it using this kind of syntax. Okay. Hopefully you guys would be able to do it. Okay. I have a lot of expectations from you guys and, uh, yeah. Okay. Similarly, you can see like joins and all that, whatever you don't understand, feel free to refer to the document. See if you can learn by yourself. Okay. That's the main point in case if you can't, I'll help you out tomorrow. Uh, yeah. So as in the environment, we were thinking we had like 10 days uh, to implement the entire ML model. Here we have only one day. Okay, I mean two days considering tomorrow as well, but uh, yeah. If I use another data set, please, how do I access the right data? Uh, just mention the data set name, okay, uh, to access no, that. No, 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 I said I was using another de uh, data set. How do I access your own right data set? Uh, okay, so let's say you want to access my rights data set. That's what are you asking? Yes, yes. Oh, then I need to make my data set public. Okay, right now my data set is uh, private. So it can't be accessed. It can't be accessed by anyone else. It can okay. be only accessed by me. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, cool. Yeah, but uh, you can make it like public and you can add collaborators. I think there's a way to do it. Uh, you will have to add, uh, you have to go to settings and uh, you know probably need to change project settings and add more uh, people. So this for this, you will have to create like a service account. Uh, this service account creation, I will tell you. So basically you'll have to go here and uh, you'll have to like add this. Uh, and you'll have to mention the person's ID whom you want to give access to. Okay, But uh, yeah, these things will probably see tomorrow. Okay, I can tell you like, uh, you know, here you see grant access. I can mention your uh, ID and you will get the access to my data set. And I can mention okay. like what kind of access you need to have. Okay. All right, thank you. Yeah. Cool. Uh, yeah, so I expect everyone to come with your 10 insights and I'll probably see you guys tomorrow. Do we need to run any 10 random queries? not any 10 random queries, 10 insightful queries, okay? 10 insightful queries, which you feel would give you insights to solve the problem that we are trying to solve, right? The problem we are solving is predicting the completion time, right? You have to check into variance of the completion time. See if you can find out the variance, what was the deviation? Uh, think about how you can implement the function. Think about what could be the factors affecting the, uh, you know, the final column, which is the, uh, uh, the total completion time. So check into all this hypothesis. Okay. Uh, yeah. That's it. 
tomorrow i'll probably yeah i'll share all the files and the docs definitely and tomorrow i'll uh, probably start with you know understanding uh, how to create a sql ml pipeline okay? so we'll discuss that and we'll also discuss some eda questions yeah bigquery doc yeah sure i can share the link let me copy this yeah someone is raising hand please feel free to uh, speak i mean yeah, uh, uh, basically uh, you told us to check that uh, site omega right omega omdena 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 yes yes omdena yeah where we have opportunity to work in the ml areas uh, we uh -huh. checked that site and uh, uh, mm -hmm. we applied for it mm -hmm. then uh, they replied that you have to first join some local chapters there okay and uh, then we mm -hmm. also applied for the local chapters some date date are there then we mm -hmm. also applied for those dates but mm -hmm. uh, mails are not coming back. Uh, like they they mm -hmm. said that uh, there may be chance that you are not getting the mails. So, okay. so uh, the main thing is we are not getting the opportunity here. So, so mail is not coming. It's not because of any technical issue. It's just because uh, they are saying like your profile is not suitable to the challenge. Is it what they are saying? Their mail has, I have not received their mail. Uh, when did you apply? Uh, the first of uh, October, near first of October. Uh, and which when was the project supposed to start? Uh, it was fifteenth, fifteenth of October, tomorrow. Mm. But there is no mail I mean, at all. Uh, generally, I remember even if they have to reject, they actually send a mail. Okay. Um, can you can you? I mean, I exactly don't know what would happen inside that company's uh functionality. But probably I can suggest you to reach out to some folks who are working in this local chapter. For example, if this, if you are use, you know participating in this local chapter, mm -hmm. you would know which chapter is organizing it. Okay, uh, probably try to reach out to folks from this chapter. For example, this is organized by Toronto Canada chapter. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, do they have a link? Let's see. Yeah, they have a link. Okay, and now you have a LinkedIn page. Go to the LinkedIn page. On this LinkedIn page, basically you would find the people's working over here. Go to the people. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. I think three only three employees are mentioned. That's why it's difficult to find. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Maybe after applying, I need to connect with those guys. Like I have applied for the same, what mm. will be the next step? Yeah, like yeah, yeah. I think uh, try to follow up on mail, see if they reply. Else, uh, you know, oh, see here, here they are, chapter mates. So these are the three people. You can reach out to them. Their LinkedIn handle is also mentioned. You can, uh, you know, probably try reaching out to them and see if you can uh, get to know more information. Okay. But like uh, in case even if uh, you know you're not getting a reply, keep applying as much as you can. Don't just get uh, demotivated. That's what I want to say. And mm -hmm. ensure you're uh, having a very good uh, you know resume profile so that they know that you have some prior experience. Okay. Uh, so that your chances of getting a reply increases. Sometimes what happens is uh, they might not have that much of requirement because it's like a local chapter, and uh, it might be filled on a uh, first come first uh, basis so you might be like late to reply and that's why you might not get a reply but usually i think they reply probably local chapters might not be that much of active mm -hmm. okay and the local chapter in the local chapter so is there is a restriction that these uh much people can apply uh i think apply applications doesn't require any uh when it doesn't have any restrictions but it would definitely have a restriction on total number of people who can uh, work together who will be selected okay. okay so yeah that will be there but there are a lot of projects happening and i think they require a lot of people so for sure if you want to apply like uh you know like you can go there so see like, top I teams think, of yeah. yeah teams of 50 collaborators and some top talent uh top talent project this will be like highly uh you know challenging projects for them they require specialized five people this is like uh, you know, AI innovation challenges. So 50 people local Oh, local chapter requires like 80 people. Okay. So here, I think probably you will have like beginner friendly audience as well. So 
keep applying i think you should uh, you know get a reply i think most probably if you are not getting a reply either you are like late or probably the chapter itself is not active or they have missed out on your uh, application so keep following with them i'm sure you'll get a reply so sure, sure thank you yeah, yeah. cool guys uh, anything else okay uh hmm Okay, if not anything, uh, let's probably catch up tomorrow then. Uh, I expect all of you to come with insights and tomorrow I'll tell you about how to create the machine learning pipeline. And surprisingly, I'll, uh, you know, like this is just like a hit off, but surprisingly we'll uh, use Python on top of SQL. Okay, So we'll see tomorrow how to write Python on top of SQL and uh, we'll basically understand that pipeline as well. Okay, cool. I'll see you. By the way, like, was this session useful? Can I quickly get a quick feedback? Like, uh, just a one word. If you had to describe the session, what would that word be in one, single one word? Amazing, super. Okay, thanks, Adamia, uh, JP Sama, Rupesh, Kirtana, Akshay, Moni. Excellent. Thank you, Jignasya. Amazing, Robin. Engaging, Vipanshu. Very nice. Ify, uh, informative, Ranjit, nice, Yash, awesome. And Ramachandra, very good. Okay, thank you so much for the positive compliment, guys. Uh, web of knowledgeable. Okay, nice. Happy, happy to see that. And I'm very glad that you guys find it interesting. And uh, hopefully you will find tomorrow's session much more, uh, you know, engaging than this as well. Okay, Parashin, awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much, guys. I'll see you tomorrow then. Yeah, I'll share the uh, documents links on the drive. Okay. I think drive, you will already have the link and I think it will be shared by your managers as well. So you can check the drive. I'll upload everything there. Bye. See ya.